Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Everybody that I know who is who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working, things go to hell in a handbasket real quick. But put all of that aside, just on a fiscal level and on a logical level. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What's going on, everybody? So Ben Shapiro is going viral and getting dunked on by a lot of people on the left and the right for saying that 65 year olds shouldn't retire, they should keep working for way longer. And this is a discussion about social security and whether it's fiscally responsible and we even have the money to do it. I wanna show you those clips and react and respond and show you some things that a lot of people won't about why I do believe that there is maybe a nuanced discussion to be had about this. But once again, I just don't see the um, consistency in his argument so i'm gonna go through it play a few clips should be a great show appreciate you guys god bless you dreamer a podcast starts now give me thumbs up in the comments if the audio sounds good it's the dream rare podcast welcome to the show the way to get the news at the desk or on the road let's go god is great and success in our control the world is crazy but we get better from obstacles yeah What's going on Facebook? What's going on YouTube? And possibly what's going on Rumble? While everybody's giving me thumbs up, I'm going to see if it worked on Rumble. I'm trying to set this up and uh, I just keep having technical difficulties. Let's see. Am I live on Rumble? Am I? No. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Do I have a sound effect for that? Let's see. I guess that's the best I could get a gasp. So I would love to go live on Rumble, but it never seems to work with my show. Anyway, someone talked about Andrew Tate. Yeah, I, I would love to cover that maybe at the end of the show or a different day because they got arrested again, but I guess they're out of custody because they're doing a live stream. But let's get into this one. Ben Shapiro is going viral. It started with a lot of left wing media kind of being like, Ben doesn't believe people should you know, retire. And, you know, I never take left wing media that seriously. But then I saw a lot of conservatives retweeting it and disagreeing with them. And I was like, OK. Let me see what the big scoop's about. So I'm going to play it chopped into four clips, react to it, show you some commentary, and then tell you why I believe this is just totally inconsistent and doesn't make sense with other things Ben does, unless you realize who Ben really is and what he really cares about, which I don't even know if you're allowed to say anymore, but we're going to say anyway. So let's get it started. And let's be real about this. It's insane that we haven't raised the retirement age in the United States. It's totally crazy. Joe Biden... If that were the case, Joe Biden should not be running for president. Hey, Joe Biden is 81 years old. The retirement age in the United States at which you start to receive so Social Security and you are eligible for Medicare is 65. Joe Biden has technically been eligible for Social Security and Medicare for 16 years, and he wants to continue in office until he is 86, which is 19 years past when he would be eligible for retirement. Before I play the next clip, I just think. Ben is so funny to me because he's so diabolically sneaky, like in order to make his talking point about how 65 year olds shouldn't retire, which is fine. You could have that point. He's like, well, look at Joe Biden. I mean, it, 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 it's like it's like, hey, re, hey, fellow Republicans, Joe, Joe Biden's old. And I mean, that that it's like you hate Joe Biden and I hate Joe Biden. So now let's make my point. It's like no one thinks Joe Biden should be president at 81. So him working at 81 isn't necessarily like the smartest talking point to be like, see, if he can work so long, then everyone can work. It's like, we don't want Joe Biden there. But Ben Shapiro knows that a lot of Republicans hear Joe Biden. It's like, oh, if you disagree with Joe Biden, then you're on my side. And I think people like Ben prey on the stupidity or naivety of people. But it's like, you know, if Joe Biden can work, so can you at 81. It's like, bro, he should not be near the White House or any job like he absolutely should retire. That's a terrible analogy or example. But uh, I don't know. It just gets worse. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Everybody that I know who is who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working. Things go to hell in a handbasket real quick, but put all of that aside just on a fiscal level and on a logical level. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt established. All right. So I, we could talk about whether we have the money for Medicare or Social Security after this, because I want to be fair and be honest. But it's like my one grandfather worked in a factory. My other grandfather worked in a factory. Uh, most of my family has done manual labor and still does manual labor. 
this sounds like a guy who has no family who does manual labor. Cause I understand being like, Hey, it's good to keep it moving. You don't want to just stop and do nothing for the rest of your life. But he's like, no one should retire at 65. I mean, keep working. It's like, says the guy who sits there and does podcasts. Like, can, can I do what I'm doing now into my seventies? Probably, but in my seventies, I'll probably in my sixties, I might start to decline, but maybe I won't. But at the same time, it's like, if you're building houses and stuff, it's like, oh, yeah, just keep working. Don't retire. It's like, says the guy who sits there and reads advertisement and makes millions of dollars selling sheets and stuff. I'm not, listen, I like the fact that he's able to do that. I obviously like my job, but telling a manual labor person that they can work after 65, it just sounds like somebody that's so elite and out of touch. And, you know, it's just, he's such a douchebag. That's why nobody really likes him that much except for his audience, but like left wingers don't like him. And, uh, you know, I think he drives, although I'm sure he wakes up a lot of people like in their young age, he also probably drives a lot of people away, but to each their own, let's listen to two more clips. 65 is the retirement age. The average life expectancy in the United States was 63 years old today. The average life expectancy in the United States is close to 80. It's totally insane that you believe that you should be able to work from the time that you are essentially 20 to the time that you are 65, which is a 45 year period, pay in, and then you'll receive social security benefits sufficient to support you and your family, you and your wife or whatever, for like another 20 years. That's crazy talk. I understand what he's saying as far as fiscally letting paying into something and like this big socialist money net and then everybody just chills and we're just like draining the money net. I get what he's saying. It's just the way he's saying it being like, how, I don't understand why people can't work past their 65. Even before Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and whatever it is, it's not like elderly people just worked into their 90s or, you know, or 80s. It's like they, they kind of retired on their own and their family took care of them as opposed to the federal government, which... I, I agree with a lot of that statement, but it's not it's not like they're out there just like, you know, chopping trees at like 80 years old. It's like at a certain point, grandpa lowers the workload a little bit because he absolutely should maybe like tone it down a bit. Maybe not just sit there on a couch. I do agree that everyone should have a function and a community and do something. But, uh, you know, it, to me, this just sounds like somebody who's never had a real physical job that doesn't understand how difficult it becomes at 40 and 50 and 60 and that uh, most people need a break from whatever they're, they've been doing for 25 years, or at least to switch professions. That is not fiscally sustainable. The notion that if you have to raise the retirement age to 67 or 68, that everyone is going to fall apart. My parents are that age. My parents are not retired. And they shouldn't retire. It would be very bad for them to retire. By the way, it's disrespectful to people who are 67, 68, 69 years old to suggest that they are in the same shape as people who are 65 were in 1940. It's not true at all. Have you met a 65-year-old lately? 65-year-olds are not old in the United States. They're not. Do you think Ben Shapiro could do manual labor for even a week? He doesn't even look like a man who could do manual labor for a week, let alone a year, let alone 10 years, let alone 35 years. So in some cases, 40 years. Like some people work from the time, you know, they're 18 to 65, do the math. I don't know how many years is that, almost 50. Um, Ben Shapiro couldn't do one one thousandth of any physical labor that any person does. But he's like, my parents work still. They, what do they do, though, bro? Like, do they do, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I want to read a, a few um, good comments. And then I want to show this video of why I'm even bringing this up in the first place is this is why I don't engage in left or right politics anymore. I'm a registered Republican. I agree with what conservatives pretend to believe in, but I've come to the conclusion since 2019 that they actually don't believe in anything. Like Ben Shapiro will tell citizens of the United States that they don't need to work or they should, they should keep working when they're 65 and they shouldn't get money. Okay, but do you think we should cut foreign aid or do you think we should give hundreds, American taxpayers should give hundreds of billions of dollars to another country that has universal health care and socialist health care system? Somehow Ben Shapiro justifies funding that country. Americans should work really hard to give hundreds of billions of dollars to a foreign country that he likes. And then he'll call it hate speech to say that it's even happening. But he can't justify you stop working when you're 65, but keep working so you can pay that country. Because listen, Ben will uh, tell you how liberal they are, which is weird because Ben's whole shtick is saying he doesn't like liberal values. But then he says that we need to send $100 billion to Israel because they support liberal values, the same liberal values that Shapiro pretends to not believe. Fortunately, because of the internet and everybody waking up over the last few years, nobody's buying his shit, not on the left wing, not on the right wing. Although Ben is popular in his little world, most of the world is waking up to what a phony he is. I'll read a few comments. 
This comes from Michael Tracy. He says, imagine saying this to a man manual laborer when your job is to sit around chatting about politics. That's like the obvious first thought is like, it's not what he's saying, but how he's talking to people. Just keep working when you're 65. Bro, what's the job? Cernovich said, remember that Ben Shapiro advocated for every war in the Middle East. It's true. He says, when the rich kids of D.C. say that America can't afford foreign aid in foreign wars, then let's talk about making grandma starve. Until then, no thanks. He also said, how many conservative pundits came from a working class background? My dad worked in factories. You're not cutting Medicare rich kids, even though my dad worked in the 70s as a machine operator. and My grandpa worked until he was 91. I completely agree and relate to what Mike Cernovich is saying there. It's like, OK, where's the consistency from Ben Shapiro? He thinks that Americans should keep working and they don't deserve a money pot. Yet Ben Shapiro advocates for sending tens of billions and hundreds of billions of dollars to a certain foreign country. And then he'll call you anti-Semitic for saying that he even likes that country in the first place, even though he always talks about how, how he does. Here's a clip of him explaining how we we need to keep giving money to Israel because uh, they support liberal values, the same liberal values that Ben Shapiro has made a living fighting against. Nick from the University of Chicago asks, why is Israel our greatest ally? Why not Australia or the UK? We spend tens of billions of dollars on Israel every year and we get nothing in return. Well, it's not true that we get nothing in return. We do spend foreign aid on Israel because why would we spend tons of foreign aid on Australia? Are they an extraordinarily embattled part of the world surrounded by enemies on all sides and victimized by terrorism? Probably not. Uh, we don't send tens of millions of dollars in foreign aid to Canada for the exact same reason. If Australia were to be put under that sort of pressure, we would be sending tens of billions of dollars of aid because we literally did that to Britain during the Lend-Lease Agreements in the 1940s when they were under existential threat from the Germans. Uh, as far as being our greatest ally, we have plenty of allies. I mean, England is an excellent ally. Canada is an excellent ally. Australia is an excellent ally. Uh, Israel is an ally in the Middle East because not only is it a democracy that shares many of our liberal values, but also it provides a... a it's a democracy that shares our liberal values. Is Ben Shapiro a liberal? He likes liberal values? I thought his whole thing was he doesn't like liberal values. He's like, they're, they're a democracy who shares our liberal values. People like Charlie Kirk complain about LGBT escalation in America, but then when it comes to the Middle East, all of a sudden he's like King Sodomite or something. You know, he's like, we, we need to make Palestine more gay. These countries aren't gay. Africa's not gay. Trump's spreading homosexuality to, to the, and it's like, listen, to each their own, but it's like, why is Ted Cruz and Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro so concerned about liberalism in the Middle East? Don't even liberal in America. Liberalism has affected the schools, the media, our entire culture, music, society, everything, the children, the youth. But, you know, that's they talk about 90 percent of the time how big of a problem that is. But when it comes to other countries, they're like, they have to support them because they have liberal values. And these darn Africans and these darn Muslims, they're just not liberal enough. They're just not allowing feminism to take over their countries. And they just and I'm not saying they're great countries. I mean, some of them are OK. Some of them are cool. Some of them suck. I'm not advocating for foreign countries. It's just like when you say, OK, Ben, I hear what you're saying. Medicare, Medicaid, people should work, et cetera. So we don't have hundreds of billions of dollars to give to old people in America. Short. Sure. But do we have hundreds of billions of dollars to give to a foreign country that has universal health care in Israel? Everyone gets health care through the government, but America's funding that country. So should we cut the funding to them since we don't have the money to pay for our elders here? And Ben will probably call you anti-Semitic. He'll probably explain to you why we have to defend them because, you know, uh, you know, they have liberal values or, you know, they, it's, it's our responsibility to work until we're 80 years old to fun, funnel money to that country. As Republicans pass hate speech laws where you're not allowed to say that someone like Ben Shapiro has loyalty to America. That's one of the hate speech laws that's been passed by Christy Noem, Governor Kemp, Governor Youngkin, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis. They're all passing it. It says you're not uh, allowed to say that somebody in America has more loyalty to Israel or the equal loyalty that they have to America. Why is that a rule and, and a law being passed in American government? Does, does nobody realize that? Are people too dumbed down by the left and right wing uh you know, false paradigm. I want to play a clip real quick that I made an Instagram reel. I talked about it on yesterday's stream, but I want to just kind of like, I saw some people disagreeing in the comments and just like always oh, nobody made any sense. So I want to play this clip and explain the number one talking point that people are saying that's completely false because it's coming from people that haven't read the set of hate speech rules that they're passing. It says nothing to do. Of course, they're going to say, oh, it's going to stop violence it's going to stop hate and it's like violence is already illegal you're not allowed to just commit crimes crimes are not illegal in any state it's not like you can do go do something horrific and nobody 
everyone cares. You're going to get arrested. I mean, obviously, in liberal states, they seem to be have shitty prosecutors. But it's like that's what Republicans say. They're like, we're trying to stop left wing violence. And, but that's not what the bill says. Read the bill. Read the rules. It literally says that it's now considered a hate speech thing that they're going to investigate in South Dakota, even though that bill protects less than 400 people in South Dakota, that small group gets a massive hate speech bill for one country, one race, one religion. And you're hateful for noticing because you don't get any hate speech laws for your religion or your race. You just have, you know, you get your, your tongue cut out and them to say that it's hate speech for you to suggest that someone like Ben Shapiro possibly has more loyalty or the equal loyalty to another country. But in our country, 70 year olds, 80 year olds should be working, 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 work, 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 Americans work, work, work. So you can go funnel money to another country and Ben Shapiro could call it hate speech because that country needs the money. But your, your 70 year old grandma in America doesn't need the money. That's conservatism in America, isn't it, folks? It's all fake. It's all controlled op. And uh, here's my little Instagram. And then uh, explain the detractors to this Instagram reel who just make up straw man arguments that don't exist because they probably listen to some goofball like Ben Shapiro, who's brainwashed them as hard as Rachel Maddow's brainwashed liberals. Republicans often say that they don't believe in hate speech when it comes to certain edgy racial or sexual conversations about LGBT. Conservatives say that the First Amendment is king. There is no such thing as hate speech. And it's hard to please hate speech because it depends who the government is and what they classify as hate. I agree with that. But the Republican Party actually doesn't believe what they're saying and they're the ultimate hypocrite. Recently, Christy Noem signed a bill. Governor Youngkin signed a bill when he got into office. Governor Kemp signed a bill. Donald Trump, when he was in office, passed an executive order. And Ron Ron DeSantis has passed multiple bills to define what is anti-Semitism, essentially hate speech phrases that they are going to codify into law to use to police hate. These hate speech rules are for one race, one religion, and one country only. It attempts to police how much you criticize Israel, talking about patterns in banking and media, who killed Jesus even, biblical discussion, and much more. Now when Republicans say edgy stuff about other races and LGBT, they say policing speech doesn't stop hate and it doesn't stop worse situations. But when it it comes to Israel, one ethnicity and one religion, all of a sudden Republicans don't believe what they tell you they believe all the time. But you won't hear much about it because most conservative media either completely agrees, covers it up, or to be quite honest, is afraid to talk about it because everybody knows if you talk about this topic, even with love and First Amendment American principles leading first, no hate at all, you get smeared by the press as anti-Semitic, you get blacklisted by most major Republican media, and the only way to rise the ranks is to sell out your beliefs for social clout and money. Let me know. All right. So I just wanted to respond real quick because I talked about this in yesterday's live and I had uh, people in the comments say a few things. And I just wanted to be clear, like I'm not afraid to have a friendly conversation about this or discuss why I believe this is an infringement on the First Amendment. I would debate anybody, Charlie Kirk, Ben Shapiro. But here's the thing. Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro get to be there because they don't talk about this topic and they cover it up. I truly believe that. So, you know, anybody that you've seen over the last couple of years, like rise the ranks of conservative media, that's why they're rising the ranks. They they don't talk about this. It's like a constant goofy loop where they just run you in circles around stupid plots. So you never figure out that Republicans sold you out to the pharmaceutical industry and are passing hate speech laws in America that absolutely will be used against you eventually in a similar way that Donald Trump passed an executive order for big pharma in 2019. He passed a universal flu vaccine that brought together eight branches of government or more than eight branches of government to create a COVID or to, or to create, excuse me, a flu vaccine task force that was six months before the pandemic so uh you know anyway i want to say the number one argument that i see because this is what all of these false opposition republicans are telling their audience is we are passing these laws to stop violence we're passing these laws to stop the left we're passing these laws to stop terrorism terrorism is illegal political violence is already illegal uh violent crimes are illegal that's not what the bill says that's what they say. And they hope that you're stupid enough to believe them. And for some reason, people just keep saying it to me like, oh, that's what this bill is, says you who've, who's never read the bill. Uh, uh, you're just being hateful to me, Anomaly. You've never read what it says. Oh, you, why are you hating on me? I've liked you for years because you're talking out of your your poo poo butt. You, you never even read what it says. There's, I believe, 11 phrases. And it doesn't just say, oh, if you commit violence, that's a crime. It's already a crime. Any sort of hate speech policing is escalating it. That would be equivalent. Real quick, just to show you what it's equivalent to, that would be equivalent to me saying, 
you should not be able to criticize the LGBTQ because trans people, so you criticize the LGBTQ, you're actually doing violence. Or if I said, you know, if you don't want some weird drag queen teacher to sexualize your five-year-old, you're being hateful. That's hate speech. And that hate speech could lead to violence. And there was some crazy right-wing guy who committed violence against a gay guy one time. So now you, by saying that, you're going to create that violence. You know, uh, you shouldn't criticize Black Lives Matter because that's racism and a white cop killed a black man. So when you criticize BLM, you're like the white cop killing somebody and your speech is violence. Do you agree with any of those things that I just said? No, Republicans make their entire brand about how there is no such thing as hate speech. And, you know, you should be allowed to speak about topics and that actually stops violence and that actually, you know, creates a, a free country where people can discuss ideas. And when you take that away, it doesn't work. But when it comes to the anti-Semitism speech laws, all of a sudden Republicans turn into liberals and they say, oh, well, this is just to stop the bad guys. Read the bill. How is saying that you can't criticize Israel as much as you criticize other democratic nations and passing that into law? How is that stopping that? How is saying that you're not allowed to say that anybody in America has dual loyalty? How is saying patterns in banking and media is now hate speech? Does that is that what the bill says? They they know that Republicans won't read the bill. They know that they're caught in the false left right paradigm, or they listen to people like Ben Shapiro, who will never talk about that, and tell seventy year olds in America that they need to work, 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 and there's not enough money in the pot. As he's sending the money in the pot to another country and calling you hateful for not wanting to send the money in another country, how are we even sending money? We're in debt. Why can't other countries go into debt and, and print money themselves? Why is America printing the money and handing it out to other countries? Yeah, I have to work till 80 years old so Zelensky could start a war with Russia for 30 years. Like it doesn't make any sense. But once you figure this stuff out, that's what the Republican Party is it's good cop, bad cop. I want to use this analogy again, real quick, because it's the most clear one. Most Republican influencers will tell you Trump got tricked by big pharma. Trump didn't know what he's doing. Trump had to do it. At least he didn't mandate it. Right. These are all the talking points that Republicans say. It's all fake. Trump took money from Pfizer. He hired pharmaceutical lobbyists. He passed executive orders. He was in on it the whole way. It's good cop, bad cop. Trump does this. Trump does that. Reagan passes the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. It was actually Ronald Reagan who passed that that shielded big pharma. George Bush, another Republican, passed the uh, um, the PrEP Act, which shielded big pharma under an emergency. Then Donald Trump rolls out Operation Warp Speed, knowing damn well that he could use the other two things that Republicans passed in order to shield big pharma. He gives them over $18 billion in socialist money. They make a profit. And then Trump and Republicans stand to the side and say, we got tricked and Biden was the one who mandated it. Yeah, it's like if one cop is yelling at you and one cop is being nicer to you, the, the, there's one cop being meaner to you, but what if they're both working together? Like you think the cop, the good cop and the bad cop aren't working for the police station? Like, oh, he's nice to me. That's the Republican Party. They're, they're in on everything. They're just pretending to just fight for you. And the only reason it never changes is because nobody can figure out that it's even happening. And they just run back and forth like little, you know, cattle and sheep, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. So with this topic, um, you know, the, I, I know what they're doing with the speech laws. Like I, I even saw in Canada, uh, Elon Musk tweeted something about that they can, I'll read it real quick because I don't want to butcher what it actually says, but something about Canada can now like throw you in prison for speech. Let me see. Elon said, he retweeted some like, it's not Babylon B, but it's not the B, which is, uh, you know, them doing real news. It says Canadian law would allow judges to hand down life sentences for speech crimes. No, this is not a joke. So in Canada, they're trying to give life sentences now and give judges power to give life sentences for speech crimes. Right. And in America, mostly Republicans, but a lot of people say that's what makes America great. Right. We have the First Amendment. You can't go to prison because of speech. Well, all of that is starting to change. Yes, liberal social media companies are selling you out. Facebook and Google, that's obvious, right? I, we could talk about all day how the Democrats are doing it. Democrats, they don't even believe in free speech. They're you know, doing this and they're doing that. But what if I told you that Trump, DeSantis, Noam, Kemp, all of them, they're doing the same thing. They're not protecting your free speech. They're passing hate speech laws and rules that are gonna protect really a lot of CEOs of a lot of companies, because, you know, if they passed an anti-Christian law where you weren't allowed to question Christians or whatever, it's like, and Christians owned a lot of stuff, then it's like, who, who are you protecting? You know, what if they passed a 
hate speech Christian law that says that you can't criticize the Pope. Or if you criticize the Pope, they get to determine if you don't criticize the Pope as much as you criticize a Muslim leader, then that's hate speech. That's what they're doing. And it has nothing to do with religion. DeSantis is a little sneak ball. You know, he passes it down there uh, in Florida and he says, oh, it's a religion speech bill. Is it? Does it include my religion? No. Does it include Hindu? No. Does it include Muslim? No. Does it include any religion except for one? No. So how is it a religion bill when it only includes one religion? And in the bill, it doesn't just include uh, protect it, well, it doesn't protect anybody because it's just hate speech laws, which are counterproductive. But in general, it's not just for religious people. It's also for ethnic people that are completely non-religious. Because if you read the bills, it's for one group of people. You know, it's an ethnic bill. It's not a it's not a religious bill, because if you're Seth Rogen and you're, you're not religious at all, that still applies to you. It's anti-Semitic to say stuff about Seth Rogen now because he's protected under his special class. And then it also includes a foreign country. And it, it, it's trying to equate if you disagree with Israel more than other countries, then that means you must hate all these people. And it's like, you know, the easiest example to use is like Ukraine was not on my radar for the last 20 years because I barely know anything about Ukraine. Because to be quite honest, I don't give a shit about it. The most I know about Ukraine is like a hot Ukrainian chick that I probably once knew. I'm just being honest. Uh, with that being said, now everybody's talking about Ukraine. Why is everyone talking about Ukraine? Why is there so much criticism of Ukraine? Is it because Americans hate Ukrainians? No, it's because Zelensky's the president and America's giving hundreds of billions of dollars to fund a war after we just got out of a 20 year Afghanistan war and our economy sucks. So we feel an extra way about it and our whole society is going to shit. What if they passed a Ukrainian hate speech law that said if you criticize Ukraine more than you criticize Switzerland, that's technically anti-Ukrainian. That's what they're doing for Israel. But nobody cares in the Republican Party because that's the Republican Party's purpose. That's all they do. They sell us out, sell us out, sell us out, sell us out, sell us out. And a bunch of Republican quote unquote men just stand there like Ugh! like a bunch of drunk loser sports fans, like, you know, acting like Trump is Taylor Swift. And these people are not smart or honest enough to figure any of this stuff out. So it just keeps going and going and going. And you don't pass hate speech rules in America to not use them. They're going to be used eventually. They're going to start being used more and more and more and more. And they're pushing them into law in every state slowly, slowly, slowly. And eventually they're going to be in all state uh, states. And eventually the president's going to use all of those speech laws. And then eventually people are going to start being prosecuted for speech. And then Trump and DeSantis and all the other controlled opposition shills are going to be like, oh, but we didn't do it. We didn't do it to you. We only passed the law. That's like what Trump says with Operation Warp Speed. I didn't mandate it. I only did socialism and communism for the pharmaceutical industry and gave them tens of billions of dollars and hired lobbyists to shit on your face. But I didn't do it. And then Republicans will be like, see anomaly? And it's like, you know, I'm not agreeing with the elites, but now I understand why they treat you like cattle. It's because you act like cattle. And that's just me being tough. It's like halftime and your defense sucks. And it's like, yo, get your defense up. Your team sucks. You know what I'm saying? It's not because I hate my team. I love my team. We're just playing terribly right now. And in America, people act like cattle. Moo, moo, moo. I don't want, I want my First Amendment moo. You don't deserve it. I actually don't think Republicans deserve the First Amendment. And I don't th think liberals deserve the First Amendment. You don't just get things because you want things. That's like a spoiled brat mentality. You have to believe in the First Amendment and freedom of speech in what was the greatest country in the world. You you have to be able to keep it and know when it's being sold out. But you got a bunch of losers, some fake DJ, you know, like uh, some wannabe DJ that nobody wants to listen to is in my comment section. He's like, anomaly, blah, blah, blah. You're so wrong. And it's like, shut up, coward. You know, you're you're a shell of a man. You're you're one one thing. Like you're not as impressive as me at anything you do. Keep your mouth quiet. Go talk to your dog that way. Like it's like not only do these people not believe in the First Amendment, but they cry like cattle when you point this out, like, why are you criticizing conservatives? It's like, because they're selling out the First Amendment. I'm dumb. I'm too dumb to get it. Then go tell your kids you're dumb or go tell your wife you're dumb. I don't want to hear how stupid you are. Like you're lowering the IQ of my chat and wasting my time. You're not even impressive enough. I'm a busy guy. I have a tight schedule. You know, like I don't talk to people like you that make me dumber. I talk to smart and pleasant people that are at least pleasant to talk to, not these beta loser fake Republican guys who don't understand why I would talk about conservatives selling out the First Amendment. It's like, that's why it happens. It's like, you know, the, the elites know it's like, just give them a guy and these idiots will believe anything like these idiots, like the guy in my comment section. It's like, 
give them a face and a character. And then these guys, they have like piss for brains. So they won't even realize when the first amendment's being infringed on. And not only do they not realize it when someone points it out, they get more mad at the person who points out factually that Republicans are shitting on the first amendment. than they do the politicians that are selling them out. That's why I'm like, I don't even, I, I obviously like, like people, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I don't even care about Republicans anymore at all. Cause they're just as stupid as Democrats. It's like, when I realized that Trump took a million dollar donation from Pfizer and hired a Pfizer guy and a pharmaceutical lobbyist to run HHS and FDA, and Trump was in on the scam the entire time, I pointed it out and you got these loser, fake, tough beta, like cuck boys, you know, that call themselves Republicans or whatever. They sit there and they get more mad at me for pointing out that Trump sold them out to the pharmaceutical industry. They get more mad at me for pointing it out than they do another man for selling them out. Sorry, my lips are super chapped today. I apologize. But it's like, you know, what, what type of coward does that? It's like, if, if another man points out that a politician took $100 million and sold his cabinet out, I'm like, oh, damn, that guy, that guy tricked me. That guy sold me out. That guy's scamming me. Thank you for telling me that he's scamming me. It's like these guys are like, oh, how dare you point out the scam? It's like, so what's your role in life then? Your, your role in life is to gatekeep your own demise. Your role in life is to get bothered when, when you realize that the two-party system's scamming you because you like one of the characters. Like, Tim, this is why I say this truly. It's like, yes, liberals are really dumb. They wear face masks all the time. They're wrong about like 95% of their political opinions. But Republicans are just as dumb and useless as liberals. It's like if you gatekeep your own demise and get mad when people point stuff out, how are you better than a liberal? Because you make fun of them all day to make yourself feel better. Like, I don't understand what people even think they're doing. Like, I have to lower my IQ like 70 points in order to even figure out what, what their thought process is. And it's just like annoying. But in general, like I see the writing on the wall. It's like, if you don't address pharmaceutical corruption, you get a lockdown, you get Operation Warp Speed, you get a failed economy, you get a two year mandate binge, you get just chaos. And then all these people just sit there and they say, I don't like the chaos. I bet you don't. I don't like the George Floyd riots. Neither do I. You know, I don't like the fact that the economy sucks. Neither do I. I don't like the lockdown. Neither do I. I don't like the mass mandate. Neither do I. But are you smart enough to figure out why it came? And are you willing to call out not just the Democrats who are usually worse, but the Republicans who are working hand in hand with them? Oh, you're not? If you're not smart enough to talk about that, then you're not smart enough to fix it. And that's how I feel about these speech laws. I don't care who agrees with me. I know I'm right. And I know that they're going to start persecuting people within the next couple of years. And it's going to be similar stuff to the lockdown. Most people are going to be annoyed when it happens, but they're not going to be able to figure out why it's happening. And it's going to happen because Republicans are selling us out. And with Ben Shapiro, I want to say this to stay on topic. Listen, there's a conversation to be had about whether Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid is sustainable. It's very hard to sustain, especially with illegal immigration and a lot of stuff that's going on. So it's not terrible to make a conversation about how long we can afford to do Medicare and Medicaid. That makes total sense. What doesn't make total sense is you saying, just work your job, work your job. You shouldn't retire. That's what you like. I've I've worked on a farm. I grew up on a farm. You know, my stepfather is a farmer. Like I, I, I my, my grandfather's both worked in factories. My dad did a physical labor job. Like I come from working class background, but in general, it's like I've had, I've, I've, I've done overnight stocking at, at a supermarket. You understand? It's like one of these things where it's like, what I do now is pretty physically easily, mentally it takes a toll. And it's not something I, I don't even want to do this till I'm 70, but in general, I understand why you would tell someone to get a job and don't like completely do nothing and lose sense of purpose. but for, for a podcaster to sit here and say, you shouldn't retire at 65, keep working, keep working into your 70s or 80s, keep working what job? If, you, if you're a farmer for 50 years, it, it's not physically sustainable to keep working. Like, it, you know, your body's broken down. And I know he said, you know, barring health purposes, a lot of people have health problems in America, though, because their jobs are not sustainable for that long of time. So it's like, it's nice to, and even you know, as I was saying earlier, back in the day, it's not like elderly people just did heavy labor until they were 80s. Eventually, their kids did the heavy labor, their kids helped them, their son helped them, their grandkids helped them. And they kind of chilled around and did little stuff, but they didn't do the same job they were doing when they were 25, when they were 70, even without the government's help, 
people do stop working at a certain point and they just do something else for a sense of purpose, like raise a family or do some gardening or something simple, not like full blown labor until you're 80. And what really bothers me about his shitty opinion is not just that he has a shitty opinion. It's the fact that his opinions aren't even consistent. It's like, so you don't believe in socialism. No, you don't believe in a money pop where, where everybody can take out of it. No, no, that's socialism. Okay. Well, that's happening in a foreign country. So do you care about that? Not only will he not care about that, he wants America to fund all that stuff. And they say it's hate speech when you you don't want to stop funding. It's the same thing in Ukraine. They want to give $100 billion to Ukraine and say that you're a Putin puppet if you disagree with it. It's like, you know, it's like we're being held for ransom, essentially. And it's just like, here, we need your money in, to go to a million different places. And if you disagree with it in America, like people are like, oh, you're free. You're free in America, sort of like, you know, during lockdowns, not so much, but like America, like the illusion of freedom is kind of disappearing. I'm still grateful. I still think it's better than other countries, the Constitution, the Supreme Court. We have a lot of good things on our side that don't exist in other countries. With that being said, like in conservative media, you're free to say what they want you to say. But if you say what I'm saying, you, they blacklist you. I know for a fact that they blacklist me from 2019. I, I'm not going to name the corporations, although I probably can. I've been blacklisted from this event. My friends at this thing, they told me they blacklisted me. One of my good friends in this industry told me that another loser told her not to talk to me because I'm so hateful. So it's like there's people behind the scenes trying to cut me off from every aspect of conservative media because they know that I disagree with hate speech laws in America. Republicans are controlled opposition. They're literally here to fund the pharmaceutical industry and pretend like they didn't pass hate speech laws that are going to be used against you in four years and act like they're not doing it. And then they use the same logic that liberals use for black and LGBT hate speech laws, you know? So it's like, I don't even care what people think because it's like these laws and these rules are going to be used against everybody in four years. And it's not going to be the cowards that sit there and play along. It's going to be, you know, any decent American who said anything remotely honest over the last four or five years, uh, you know? So it's a little just annoying because it's like, you know, like some loser in the comments will be like, oh, well, I think this. I'm sure you think a lot of things. It doesn't mean you're right, though. And also, it's like you think all these wrong things. But when I think the right things and I say it, I end up in 40 different publications where they're trying to ruin my character for the rest of my life. So, you know, the consequences are pretty steep for what I'm talking about. And these dingbats that you're trying to help don't even realize it. Um, someone said my grandpa was a chef until he's 80 years old. It's great. I mean, if 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 Ben was consistent with his thoughts, I wouldn't even care. But he's not consistent at all. So, you know, I don't want I don't want to send hundreds of billions of dollars overseas. Like if we don't have money for anything in America, we don't have money to send it overseas. And it's a BS excuse to say that they're liberal. They're liberal. What does that mean? Like, what does liberal even mean anymore? It doesn't mean what it meant 10 years ago. So sharing liberal values, what does that mean? Gay parades and censorship? Because that's not what I thought liberal meant. So it's like, you know, th there's not there's not freedom. It's like freedom exists to the extent that they want to exist in every country. Like in, uh, you know, in America, it's like freedom means you could like sexualize a three year old and pass a hate speech law. In other country, you don't have the freedom to disrespect God and like godly values. And then Americans act like, oh, that's so crazy. It's like it, it's crazier what we're doing. And I'm not saying I want to be these other countries, but like what America is doing is crazier. Like America has a God and it's a rainbow flag. It's like, you know, what other countries are doing that you hate. They're doing it for things that they perceive as godly. You know, they don't want women doing this or people doing this or people to do this and that. And in America, it's like you don't have the freedom to be that person, but you have the freedom to wear, you know, a banana peel over your penis and, and, and go march in the streets with seven year olds like that's what you that. But that's not crazy, right? But oh, but that's just San Francisco. OK, then why are we spreading it to other countries? You know, because like that's what Republicans and Democrats are doing. They're saying these countries aren't doing that. Can you believe they're not having parades? It's like yeah, I can believe that because like, why would every country have parades like that? That's weird. Like it's not necessary. It's not our job to bring that to another country, but that's America's foreign policy is they go around the world and bully any country that either doesn't want to be a part of certain banking systems or just won't play suit to our foreign policy, which is making everyone gayer and, and bringing feminism to their country. Look at Ukraine and Russia. Look at both sides of that. They've both gone in two different directions. Russia's getting more Christian and more conservative, and Ukraine is just getting gayer and more liberal. It's like, look at all the laws that they've passed since the war started. Ukraine's turning into San Francisco. 
And Russia is one of the last countries that isn't completely caving to liberal, you know, escalation. And I'm not envious of either country. I'm not asking to be Ukraine or Russia. I don't care about either of them, to be honest. But it's like, that's what's going on. And any country doesn't more liberal, America runs around to try to make them more liberal. And Ben Shapiro tells you that they need to be more liberal. And Charlie Kirk tells you they need to be more liberal. And Mike Pompeo says that we're doing a liberal world order. Look it up. He's like, we're, we're establishing a liberal world order. I thought the Republicans don't like liberals. That's all they say. That that's why I don't do like normal videos anymore. Everyone's like, why, why, why won't you talk about this or that? Because it doesn't matter. Everybody's fake. It's like they complain about liberalism in America while they spread liberalism all over the world, and then they complain about it here, and, and then they they're like totally powerless to do anything because every topic that they t say they care about, they don't care about. Let's go through every Republican talking point. This is why I make the videos I make now. First Amendment. I just showed you that they don't care about the First Amendment. They're literally selling it out and doing the same thing liberals are doing for gay and black. And, and, and they're total hypocrites about it. What about the Second Amendment? Trump infringed on the Second Amendment so hard that I think the Supreme Court eventually is going to overturn it. He infringed on the Second Amendment more than Obama did. Uh, socialism, he printed more money than Obama, and he did Operation Warp Speed, which is a pharmaceutical socialism. You know, they send money to foreign countries, which is socialism. It's just socialism for other countries, not for you. They take your money and they use it, but you can't use your own money. That's the logic there. So it's like, Everything that Republicans think they're fighting for, it's all fake. I'm not asking people to vote for Joe Biden. Joe Biden sucks. But it's like the easiest example that I've used, and I, I hate to be repetitive, but clearly I don't because I always am. I don't do it to be annoying or, or like, you know, over say something. It's just like if I have a clear example, I want people to remember it. But it's like if, if the New York Knicks are playing the Los Angeles Lakers and you're the New York Knicks, four out of five players on your team are bought out and they're scoring on your own basket it's impossible for you to win the game the bigger threat is not the other team that's scoring on you it's your own team that's out and working for the other team it's literally impossible to win if four out of five players on your own team are scoring on your own basket and working with the other team that's why it's the most important thing to talk about that's the republican party does joe biden suck absolutely do democrats suck yeah i uh Palestinian protester that wears pharmaceutical COVID masks? No, you don't see me in the streets protesting. I'm not an activist. With all that being said, our side isn't doing shit. They're not doing anything that they claim to do. They're infringing on multiple amendments proudly. Everything they say is a lie, and they're hoping that no one figures it out because then history will just keep repeating itself in circles. It's like, that's why I talk about the Republicans more than the Democrats. It's not because I like the Democrats. I don't like almost anything that the Democrats do. But to me, the Democratic Party is like irredeemable at this point. Like they're so far off course that it's hard for me to see the Democrat Party being a serious party for the next 10 years. I think they're too far gone. So I talk about Republicans because that's the opposition to the horror of the Democratic Party. But the opposition's not real in any facet of the word. They're not conservative. They're not libertarian. They're not capitalist. They're not pro First Amendment. They're not pro Second Amendment. They're not America first. None of those things. What are they? They'll sort of close the border. I mean, that's what's on the ballot this this uh, November is like they'll sort of close the border. And it might be strategically worth it to vote for them because like they might sort of close the border. I they can't possibly do a worse job than Mayorkas is doing. It's not possible. I mean, he's doing the worst job imaginable. So that's what's on the ballot. But let's not pretend that the First Amendment's on the ballot. It's not. The Second Amendment's not on the ballot. Republicans don't even protect the first, the Second Amendment. Democrats talk about ending the Second Amendment, but they never can get the power to do it. Republicans talk about protecting the Second Amendment, and they're the ones that give it up. It, it doesn't matter who you vote for, but like you vote for Trump if you want the border to sort of be closed, possibly. Like that's what's on the ballot. Let's just be real about it. Um, Someone said Carrie Lake is the worst. She's just another shouting head. You know, she's just another like they give you these talking heads to just be like, bah, 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 and then you're like, yeah, 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 Look at Carrie Lake's Twitter. She's like, oh my gosh, we need more speech lines. Oh my gosh. She's just as the same as all of them. 
it's it's like um, but i like her i'm sure you do and i like uh you know i i like ray mysterio you know but that's not gonna save my country uh let me see I guess now building a wall doesn't seem like a terrible idea. I mean, securing the border is a good idea, but it's just not happening right now. You know, that's what's on the ballot. Vote for Trump if you sort of want the border to sort of be secured. It's not going to be secured, but it'll be slightly better, sort of. You know, even they, they have like this little game. Someone pointed it out on my Instagram. I think his name was like Souls of a Movement or something. He's got some pretty big page and he made a really good point. Basically, what he was saying was like, both parties are in on it together and they both do things that allow the other to do what they want to do. You understand? So it's like, for example, like when Obama was in office, um, illegal immigration wasn't great, but it wasn't that bad. It actually ramped up under, under Trump, but it's not Trump's fault. It's not like Trump wanted illegal immigration to rise. It's just he got in, he started talking about it. So then they started sending caravans to the border and every day is this big, like huge thing. So it's like, even though Trump's in office, he's the guy that's gonna sec secure the border, but the border gets worse because even though he's there, he can't do much. They tie his hands and they just send more people to the border. Then it's like he starts selling vaccines. He, get, he, he gets kicked out of office. And then Joe Biden's here and he just lets the floodgates open and they're pouring across the border and, and nobody can do anything. It's like it's like a little game where they just create a story where it's like you'll get in and you'll 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 say you're going to take away the Second Amendment, but then you won't. You'll go start wars in Libya. You'll get in. You'll say you're going to protect freedom and stop socialism, but you're going to do socialism and fringe on the first two amendments, sell vaccines. And your supporters are so stupid that they won't even realize it. And then you'll get in and open the border and start a war with Ukraine. And then as soon as we fuck that up, you know, then you'll get in and you'll end the war and then you'll start the one in Israel and escalate that. It's like, you know, I feel like they're just like going back and forth between the parties trying to figure out who can do what. It's like, how did how like, you know, how do they get something done? It's like, well, something happens and then they have justification to do it. You know, it's like I don't know what was really going on, but as far as like all the vaccine stuff. You can trace like this. This is what and I'm not the only one, but there's I would say I'm less than one percent. Unfortunately, I think like David Knight has talked about it. There's a few good reporters, but most people are shit. Um, most Republicans are just like telling you that like, oh, Trump got tricked in 2020. That's like saying that a tree just magically appeared like out of nowhere and the roots don't exist. When you get to the roots, you realize that all of this stuff happened in 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 2020 2020 blows up and you're like oh he just got tricked no he was in on every step of the way like you know i don't know what would have happened if someone else would have won but it's like trump was knee deep in the corruption like he even says sometimes that obama did a bad job with swine flu and trump did a better job with covid what are you talking about i don't even like obama but obama didn't lock the country down for swine flu like swine flu was bad, but it wasn't that bad to the point where they had to shut the whole country down. So it's like Trump is such a controlled opposition idiot that he thinks that Obama did a bad job with swine flu because Trump locked down and sold vaccines harder. It's like Trump. It's like he's literally a big suck up like shill and nobody realizes like like he, he, he thinks you're stupid. And to be quite honest, he's probably right. It's like no one believe like, do you think that covid was handled better than swine flu? Swine flu was handled better because I could live my life and not think about it. And nobody made me do anything. COVID was handled horrifically on and it wasn't just Trump's fault. But it's like the reason that it's not going to change is because all his supporters think that was wrong. And Trump's on stage. and He's like, no, I did it right. And people are like, no. And he's like, yes. And he's like, no. Yes. And then they're like, OK, yes. Gulp, gulp, gulp. You know, I'm, I'm drinking liberal tears. I don't think that's liberal tears in there. I think it's some other substance. But, you know, whatever you want to tell yourself. Is it normal to lean Republican as you get older? Absolutely. They say that, uh, you know, there's an old saying, my buddy told me this, if a kid is conservative when he's young, he has no heart. If a, if a kid is not conservative, or if a man is not conservative by the time he gets older, he has no brain. So the thought is like a young Republican has no heart, but an old liberal has no brain. So I think it's totally natural as men evolve and you learn how taxes work, the world works, like reality. I think it's totally normal to become more Republican, more conservative. But the, the issue is not the values that they claim to stand for. The issue is like being able to see it. The, the easiest example I could use is like a contract, right? 
I've been doing people don't know this if you don't watch like all my streams because I don't usually talk about it till like way later in the stream but I've been involved in like music stuff since I was 19. I had contracts from multiple people big distributors I think uh I forget the the record labels to be honest like I don't want to misquote it but I've had contracts my whole life they're always telling me these stuff right oh we like this we like that you, you know we want to do this and that but the truth is like it, it's not what they say to your face. It's what they write in the contract. If you sign a contract that says they take 50% of all your stuff, but they told you they were going to give you billion millions of dollars, but, but it doesn't say that in the contract, what they tell you doesn't matter. It's what you sign. It's the same thing with a politician. What Trump says or what Biden says, it doesn't matter. Like he could go on stage and be like, Ooga, blah, 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 blah. I love black people, blah, blah, blah. I love Asians. I love Hispanics, you know, uh, I love the Mexicans. I love Christians and la, 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 la. You're all going to be rich and the economy is great. Like that, does, all that, like them talking on stage literally like does very little. I mean, unless they're leading a movement or something, but what do they sign? If they say America will never be a socialist, sorry, that was a goofy example, but I'm just trying to be funny. You know, if they say America will never be a socialist nation, but then they do socialism, it doesn't matter that they said it will never be a socialist nation. It's current, like, during COVID, it's like it was all socialist lockdowns, Operation Warp Speed, like people in the Republican Party, they literally and I, you know, I, I sound like I'm being rude now, but I'm just being honest and awesome. Uh, they reward people that are stupid. Like I'm too smart. I'm too honest. I'm too ethical. So they don't want to give me positions. They're looking for someone that's half as funny as me, half as charming as me, half as smart as me, half as honest as me. That's an airhead that's easier to control with money, fame, and social circles. The last contract I was offered, they're trying to lowball me and treat me like shit and talk to me like I'm a fucking loser because they want a fucking loser. You know what I'm saying? They want somebody who has nothing that they could take away from them at any time so they can control them. If you have a billion views, millions of followers, and you have your own income and you don't need their money, they actually don't like it. Like they're talking to me like I'm a crackhead in the street, like I need something and that they're the only ones who know cool people and stuff. It's like they're talking to me like sideways because it's like a it's like a test to see like, you know, is he is he fake enough to play ball? You know, and if you're not they they just throw you to the curb and get some airhead who's like a, you know, Walmart version of you. So that's what all these news organizations are doing because they want people there that don't talk about this stuff. You know, like someone that's just going to sit there and be like, America is never a socialist nation. It's like, but I, and then I'll be like, well, Operation Warp Speed was socialist. And they're like, he didn't mandate it. The, socialism doesn't say mandate. Like, you know, that's not what it means. Like socialism, I mean, it has a lot of meetings, but like if you're taxpayer, if you're locked in your house and Trump signs a bill that says that $18 billion of taxpayer money is going to the pharmaceutical industry to rush a product in which the government is shielding them from liability, from side effects and injuries and deaths. And then the government buys their product by the hundreds of millions and they make the most profits they've ever made. Let's play a quiz, dummies. Not you guys. I'm talking about the conservative influencers. Is that capitalism? Er, that's not capitalism. Capitalism is not the government funding and then buying the product that they funded and then shielded with government clauses from liability. That's not that's not capitalism. That's not conservatism. That's socialism. That's borderline communism. That's what Trump did. But you don't get to be on these podcasts if you talk about this stuff. They want idiots. They want people that are like half as smart as me, that are ugly, that are just stupid and talentless, that just go there and be like, Trump, Trump, Trump. And then all the people are like, Trump, Trump, Trump. Like they, it's all, and then they just get ad revenue and then they gatekeep. And then, and then they're like, oh, free speech matters. And then the Republicans infringe on free speech. Notice who won't talk about this. Is Matt Walsh going to talk about the anti First Amendment free speech bills? No, he'll just shill for the moon landing being real. Is, uh, you know, are they going to have this discussion on PBD podcast? I don't know. I hope they do, but I don't see it. It's like, does anyone care about the First Amendment? It's pretty important. Trump sold it out. DeSantis sold it out. Noam sold it out. Youngkin sold it out. They're all passing anti First Amendment speech laws. How come nobody's talking about it? No, they don't care. They all just collect money and hang out with each other and get each other sponsors and do speaking gigs and just yell basic phrases on a stage. Like, you know, that they don't want somebody that's gonna like tell the truth to the kids. They want like Ted Cruz on stage doing like fart jokes. And people are like, I never realized how funny Ted Cruz is. Ted Cruz is funny if you've never seen a comedian in your life. Like he's funnier than Adam Schiff, but 
Like if Ted Cruz is your comedian, you're a fucking loser. Excuse my language. It's like TPUSA events. Like, look how funny Ted Cruz is. No wonder why America hates conservatives. Like you guys think Ted, you know, yet they blacklist people like Owen Benjamin, who's actually funny. Is he edgy? Of course. But like, they're like, you can't laugh at him, but you should laugh at Ted Cruz. Like I'll laugh at Ted Cruz for other reasons because he sell, he sells out the constitution and wants to make Africa gay. Like what? Like, but I'm not like, he's not like a funny guy. He gets up there and he's like, let's go Brandon. And everyone's like, Oh yeah, let's go Brandon. It's like, and they'll be like, Oh, you did Ron DeSantis wear small shoes. And people are like, Oh yeah. It's like Ted Cruz didn't make that joke. He, he like repurposed everyone else's jokes and just like reads other people's jokes in a dumber way. I'm just so tired of it all. Um, someone says he unfortunately loves Trump. It's not about loving Trump. It's about loving money and social circles and sponsors. These people are not stupid. Do you guys realize how much money there is to not talk about these topics? I probably could make more if I really wanted to, which I don't, so I don't care. If I really wanted to like, if my number one, sorry, I got big lips, so sometimes they're chapped. I apologize. Um, anyway, if if my number one goal was like business and money, I could probably make more money from donors than I than I've ever made doing news analysis. Like they'll just hand you money. Like you guys think this isn't happening? It's absolutely. Here's seven million dollars, you know, to push our foreign policy. You know, here's a sponsorship of half a million dollars with these people. All you have to do is look at the Bud Light situation. It's like they all were protesting Bud Light until the donors met with Donald Trump. Bud Light paid the UFC and Dana White hundreds of millions of dollars. Dana White's in the commercials now. Dana White talks to Kid Rock. Trump talks to Kid Rock. And everybody backs off it because they took the money. I mean, that's a small microcosm. But the same thing happens in every situation. You think if someone came to these people and said, here's $10 million to never talk about the speech laws. Or here's a million dollars. I'm not saying that's happening exactly. But there's huge donors in the Republican Party. There's huge sponsors. And a lot of these people are running a business, you know? They want to own half of my uh, social media. They tell me that they think I'm one of the best reporters. But as soon as they can't own half of my social media, they won't even answer my text and have me on the podcast. So it's like these people never respected me anyway. It's like if you could respect me enough to almost hire me, you could respect me to have a 30 minute conversation. But they don't want to have that conversation. They just want to make money. Like, you know, it's just a big money grab. R Republican media is just sucking money out of naive boomers while they're still here and just milking them dry, which is a great business model if you hate America and hate people here. But if you actually like the country and like the First Amendment, then it's kind of a shitty thing to do. But all you have to do is point at the left and nobody even realizes that you're doing it. Um, JK said you have, thank you for the super chat. He says, you have everyone laughing at the firehouse, Ted Cruz running around making Africa gay. Thank you, JK. Shout out, Fireman. We appreciate you. It's true, though. He says, oh, Austin, Texas is doing LGBTQ to the kids. And it's like, yeah, that's crazy. And then it'll be like, there's not enough sodomy going on in Africa. They're trying to outlaw it. It's like, so you want to make Africa gayer? Like, I don't like that's your job in Texas. You're a Texas senator and you're tweeting about how you want Uganda to be gayer. Like it's, it's hilarious. It's like, I, people think I'm like mad. I'm it's like legitimately like pure comedy. It's like, you know, these Muslims aren't gay enough. That's why we need to give a hundred billion dollars to a foreign country. Cause, cause their neighbors aren't gay enough. It's like, that's America's role in the world now. I'm sure, I'm sure God loves us so much now. Cause we're just spreading war and dropping bombs on children and making everyone gay. Yeah. This is totally Christian. Doesn't even make sense. Uh, Robert Blatchley said, Anomaly, I'm so sick of hearing about people waking up when they aren't. People would rather live in a dream world than, and be ignorant, except then accept accountability for their choices, peace, and stay safe. You're one of the few I follow. Thank you, Robert. It's also tiresome because it's like one of these things is it, I know that there's certain things I could do to like profit more. I just don't care anymore. Like, I, you know, I just don't care about like following narratives that don't make any sense you know like that's all they're doing like everyone's just running in circles but you see what's going on and it's like listen i i like people that hang out and like i'm not trying to be like a party pooper like hang out go turn up if you want to make money like go to ufc events there's nothing wrong with that like i like a lot of people it's just like at what cost though like what what's the point like uh, you know i like dana white as a ceo but it's like he does a deal with a with Bud Light and then he tells people to drink gallons of beer. Like 
I want to, I was going to do a whole stream about this, but my beef with Trump too, besides the policies he actually passed as a leader, your words are also doing something, but these people, they do a massive deal with a shitty beer company. And then they tell all their leaders to drink beer, drink gallons of beer. Like that's not somebody who gives a shit about you. A real leader that cared about their nation and cared about their country would be like, get strong, work out. But Trump and Dana White are like, drink gallons of beer and, and I'm the father of the vaccine. They're a bunch of sellouts, you know? And I like Dana White, but it's like, drink gallons of beer, boys, because I did a, a deal with them. You know, get your Pfizer and Moderna because I did a deal with them. It's like, no wonder America's going to shit. Liberals are disgusting, but also conservatives are disgusting. Like, they're, they, they look up to people that literally hate them. Like, it's embarrassing, you know? Yeah, no, not only have I not sold my soul, I'm just not like a pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, like I'm not stupid enough to like watch a man say drink gallons of beer and get vaccines because I'm the father of the vaccine and be like, oh, that's cool. You know, if that's cool to you, you're just as dumb as a liberal. Like, you know, the reason they keep doing this is like they're just scamming the crap out of the conservative base because the conservative base isn't conservative and they're not even like a base. They're just like a rabid group of sports fans. They just want to like, cheer and yell at joe yell let's go brandon like you know i was at a conservative bar trump came on the tv and everyone just starts yelling like oh like animals and it's like dude i like trump a little bit i used to but like they're like let's go brandon blah, blah, blah. it's like that's all they care about trump's like my vaccine is great drink gallons of blood light eh. and people are like, eh, eh, who cares about us like no they just want to make you fatter and more addicted to pharmaceuticals because that's what you guys are to them you're like a factory farm cattle they put you on like a conveyor belt you're just getting fat you're chugging shitty beer you're getting injected with the pharmaceuticals that trump funded and then you're like yeah they love me it's like no dude have you ever have you never like read a history book a leader that likes a nation tells people to work out and exercise and protects families. They don't tell people to drink gallons of Bud Light and get vaccines. Like th these are leaders that literally would shit in your face. And you probably say it was chocolate rain. You know, it's, it's pathetic. Like, you know, it, it is what it is. And it's like, I just don't care. Like, I don't even care anymore. It's like, wow, you know, I don't agree. I'm sure you don't. Who cares? You know, it's just so fake, but it's not even their fault. It's Republicans fault for, for, for not loving themselves enough to like notice that it's even happening. You know, things are so watered down in this country that the opposition seems appealing because the left is so far gone. And this is how they operate. This is how intelligent people operate. You move both parties at the same speed in the same direction. So it's like liberals go insane. So then you run back to the other party, but the other party's moving in the same direction and they're working with those people. And then all people say is like, oh, but I, uh, I don't want to believe that. Or like, oh, what other option do I have? I don't know. Being a man. Like, did you ever think of that? Like, you don't have to drink gallons of Bud Light and inject yourself with pharmaceuticals. And if a man tells you to drink gallons of beer, even though they don't drink gallons of beer, and a man tells you to inject yourself with their socialist warp speed pharmaceuticals, like, maybe you should, like, be like, you're whack. You know, like, if, if people said, like, that you, you're whack, they would stop doing it. But they don't have to stop doing it because nobody cares. Like, Republicans eat it up. And then you get these loser guys that'll come to my comment section and be like, uh, like they they gatekeep their own failure like not only do they not care that this is happening they get upset when other men tell them that it's happening like that's the ultimate coward to be honest psychologically this is why so many republican pages are popular it's not just because the left is insane and the world's going to crap it's because most people don't want to do the tough work and be honest with themselves and they don't have self-awareness all they want to do is make fun of somebody else and then feel better about themselves. Like, look at the left. They're so pathetic. They make me feel good. I'm drinking my beer and getting my Trump vaccine. I'm better than that guy. Yeah, and I'm better than a five-year-old at basketball. But what does that matter? You know, like I always say it's like dunking on a kid with a Fisher Price net and saying you're Michael Jordan. Like it doesn't, you know, it's like it's like psychologically all these like and then look at all the shit they sell in these right wing pages. They just sell you like literally anything like you're just cattle. They're like, yeah, well, it's and like and then all the comments are filled with like people being like, yo, this is the crappiest product. And then they just block you or just you know, or, or like uh, shut off their comment section. It's like they're just treating people like cattle. But the reason is that people act like it, you know. Someone said. I blame the people because all these politicians care about is making money and the corporate networks. Absolutely. It's just like, yeah, people, they, they 
I, I figured it out. Like I know why the influencers and in, in the in the Republican media does it. Obviously, left wing media sucks too. I'm just focusing on the right now. Um, they do it because it makes more money. Like they're all about money. They're all about money and social circles. And when you have a lot of money and you go to these social events, you're not like it's politics, guys. You're not just hanging out with uh you know people. You're hanging out with billionaires and sponsors and donors. And the way you get the money is to just play ball. So they're all making money. What I couldn't figure out for the longest time is like, I know why the podcasters and the influencers and the news guys do it, but why did normal people go along with it? Like it was bothering me all last year. I was like, I get why they're doing it. It's not ethical, but I get it. Why do normal people who have nothing to gain play along? But it's like they have this sports fan mentality and a lot of people, they just want to believe that these people are really fighting for them. So they just kind of throw their weight behind it at the same way you just get wasted and you root for like the... Broncos or whatever. And I like sports. I'm not against sports. Sports are sports. Enjoy your life, but it's just sports. But at the same time, you know, I, it's nothing wrong with liking it, but that's why people do it. It's just like, they, they think about it like it's a sports game and, they, and they're just like cheering for these people, but there's no like financial incentive for them to do it or like any incentive really. But I think that people think that they're like fixing the problem, you know, it just, it's just weird. Let me see. Did Elon Musk buy Ford? I don't know. It, it, did that happen today or something? I'd have to look it up. Someone said most Christians are told to back Israel from their church. Yeah, that's that's a phenomenon that's happened in the last 80 years. But for thousands of years of Christianity, that was non-existent whatsoever. Every major Christian leader from Martin Luther and others did not believe that at all. And in the 1900s, the I believe it was like the Schofield Bible and other efforts to just turn every church into like Zionist first, it worked magnificently. People think it's Christian now to just like that's they, like they need to pass speech laws in America for another group in order to be Christian. It doesn't even make sense. Like it's like where it doesn't say that in the Bible. It like that's not what it means at all. It doesn't ask you to hate anybody, but it's like. Imagine if Christians thought they should pass speech laws for Muslims. Like, it, like, why would the Bible tell you to protect another group of a religion that you don't even believe? Like, it makes no sense whatsoever. But Zionist boomers, they, they've been brainwashed for 40 years. They literally will never get it. They're like, but my church told me and I thought the Bible said this. Where does it say that? Like, <laughs> passing speech laws for another religion? That's what the Bible said? There's no passages about people that aren't who they say they are and, and 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 you know like there's no story in the bible about jesus rejecting modern day pharisees and you know creating his own religion that like what what like what what book are you reading like the, you you take one phrase out of context and you're like as a christian i need to bomb children in a foreign country and pass speech laws for people that literally think jesus was a sex magician it's like I guess Christians in America are too stupid to have a country, which is why they're losing it. It's not, there's no victim mentality. It's nobody's fault. Don't blame a group. Don't blame a religion and don't blame the left or the right. Blame yourself. You know, Amer Christians in America and conservatives in America are losing America because they deserve to lose it because they're too fake and stupid to realize what's going on. And they're literally actively just passing laws, preventing them from even reading Bible verses. And they think that that's being a Christian. It's like, it's, it's embarrassing. It's so stupid. Someone said Anomaly is right on this. I appreciate it. Yeah. Someone said, dude, Christianity started with Christ's disciples. Did Christ's disciples believe Jesus in the Bible or, or did Christ's disciples believe the people that don't believe in Jesus? Like, you know, I'm just asking for a country where religion is free. I'm not asking every Muslim or Jewish person to be Christian. It's not my job. I'm not a pastor. I'm not you know, trying to convince people what to believe. That's I'm, I'm trying to do my job as a news analyst. But as an American citizen, I don't live in a free or fair country. They have special laws for LGBTQ. They have special laws for Jewish organizations in Israel. And the Christian boomers are like in on it. They're like, this is what we got to do for Jesus. And it's like, you are so stupid. And that's why people think you're stupid because you are stupid. And they're treating you like you are as stupid as you are. And that's why you're losing your country. And all your leaders are passing speech laws for another religion. W would Israel pass a speech law that said you can't blaspheme Christ? No, they don't give a crap about you. Why? Like, 
why would they pass a law in their country with with a religion of Judaism for Christians? Like that's how pathetic Christians are in America. They're straight up pathetic. Like it's like that's what we need to do. It's like you're so embarrassing. You know, like we deserve our country. Why? Because we like Trump. <laughs> You're like, okay, yeah, totally. Like, you know, this, 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 the fall of America is earned. I don't consider myself a victim. I don't blame one group or one religion or one group of people. It, 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 there's no self accountability or self awareness in, in the Christian world. They're, they're selling out their own people proudly and they fall in love with beer gulpers and pharmaceutical scammers. Like they're, they're number one fan. Most most Christians probably have like worshiped Trump more than Jesus over the last four years. And he's a vaccine scammer and they don't care. They get mad when men point it out. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, OK, go go back home. Worship your Trumpy boy, your Trumpy bo doll. Would I vote for a speech law that banned criticizing Hinduism? LOL. America is supposed to have religious freedom. There's not supposed to be speech laws for one group and one, but like America's religion is not Christianity. So you're having laws that go against Christianity. Like it's all there. Like, I don't even feel like repeating myself. I've covered it over the last three years. And the more I talk about it, the more tr in trouble I get for what I'm trying to free a group of people that literally doesn't even care. It's like, I'm trying to wake up people that literally like want to just like lose, you know, it's like, there's no point. Like, let these people lose. They're going to ruin the country. And then maybe they'll figure it out in like two to five years. But if not, it doesn't matter. Someone said, my, my father started paying into Social Security at 16. He retired at 70 and started collecting Social Security and died at 73. My father did not get my return on his investment. That's, that's uh, yeah, it's, it's a dicey system. I don't, I, like... I'm not a big fan of like giving everyone my money. It's like, here, give me $200,000 over the course of your life so I could give it back to you. Maybe it's like, that's like health insurance. It's like spend a hundred thousand dollars. And then when you go, go to the hospital, we'll save you $10,000. Like people don't even, everything's a scam, you know, like it's like health insurance is a scam. Car insurance is a scam. Everyone thinks it's not a scam. And that's why it is the biggest scam. Like so many people try to convince me that car insurance is not a scam and health insurance is not a scam. All right. How much money will I pay into health insurance by the time I actually use it? Probably more than I'll ever use it. Car insurance, it's the same thing. It's like, but they'll we'll, they'll give it back if you get in an accident. No, if you get in an accident, they'll try everything they could possibly do to not pay it back. And they'll, they'll try to sneak their way around every clause to give you nothing. You, you'll pay into car insurance $100,000 in your life. And the one time you need 20 grand from them, they'll try to you know trick you out of it. Um, Robert said... Rockefeller funded the Schofield Bible. The pilgrims used the Geneva Bible, not King James. There are many versions of the Bible in Geneva that's not talked about. Tandal, Geneva, and Tawahedo Bibles are the ones to look for. I mean, it's it, it's so obvious that it's like hard to even try to like explain it to people who believe in like that they need to worship Zionism in order to be a Christian. No one's asking you to hate any country or hate anybody, but it's like in the Bible, like who believes in Jesus in the world, right? You're, that's your whole religion is believing that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that, you know, Jesus is Lord and that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christians believe that. Muslims respect Jesus Christ. They think he was a prophet, but not the Lord. And another group of people, they don't give a shit about him. They think he was a sex magician. Some of them think he was a liar. Some of them despise Jesus Christ. And you're passing speech laws to, pr to protect them from criticism, including speech laws that basically s prevent you from having a biblical discussion about Jesus. That's in the speech law. They mention Jesus's name in the anti-Semitism speech law. Christians are ridiculously stupid in this country. Like it's, it's embarrassing. It's pathetic. And that's why I'm blaming Christians. It's not like I'm sitting here blaming another group. It's no one else's fault. Christians are like scamming themselves. It's so pathetic. It's like, it's like animal like behavior. It's, it, it's like, it's embarrassing, you know, like, why would you, do, you don't even have, you don't even have blasphemy laws for your own Lord and savior. Why would you pass laws for another group that doesn't care about them at all? Like that's in the Bible. What Bible are you reading? Like, what are you talking about? It's, it's like the, the Republican party is so fake. It's ridiculous. Uh, Uh, let me see. Do I study Bible prophecy? 
I mean, I don't really listen to, I don't like, I, I've read Revelation on myself. I've read it like Revelations front to back. I don't need to hear some pastor tell me what it says. I can read it for myself. So like, you know, if, if a good prophet or someone catches my, 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 catches my view, then maybe I'll like look into it, but I'm not like, everybody's like, and then Jesus grabbed the horn and Trump is the horn. And it's like, look at this prophecy. It's like, yeah, that's a false prophet, but you know. I, I don't listen to like, unless somebody really catches my eye, I think most prophets are fake because they're, they're always trying to like make up their own. To me, it's, you know, you should be careful with biblical prophecies because if you're out here saying this guy's the mark of the beast and it's not like you're a false prophet in the Bible, it doesn't like you. So, you know, like you should be like clear and sure about what you're saying. Not, not pretend like it. I think some people do it for attention because like if you're not getting enough attention, if you pretend you're a prophet, then everyone's like, oh, but that's why the Bible says like, don't pretend to be a prophet if you're not a prophet. But like, you know, 99% of people are trying to be like, Trump is Jesus returned to the horn and the listen to the, it's like, what? Jesus take the wheel. Exactly. He took a lot of wheels. That's one of the memes I posted. It's like Jesus with a lot of wheels behind him. It's kind of funny. Anyway. Someone said, you don't need a third party to get to God. I'm not looking for anything. Like, I just want politicians to stop stealing my money and scamming me. It's not like I'm, a, I'm not asking Trump to be my pastor, but it's like if he passes a, a, a hate speech law, I'm just telling them not to do that. But if you say not to do that, they act like you're so hateful. They're like, you're hateful. I'm not hateful. I don't, I'm not mad. Like, just stop scamming me. And they're like, you know, the government just can't stop scamming. They're like, oh, you don't want 50... 12, 11 phrases to be considered hate speech no i don't like that does it doesn't seem necessary like why for one group only no oh you're so hateful no i'm literally not like oh you want it for your religion also no i don't i don't need that i i can defend my religion myself if i want to i don't need the government to stop people from saying things like you know that's like it's just like in south dakota Google how many people of that ethnic group even live in South Dakota. I believe the number's under 400. Christy Noem passed a law for under 400 people in her state. And the law says that you're not allowed to say that they have any power. So why didn't another group of 400 people get their own hate speech laws? D do people get how diabolical it is what the Republicans are doing? Less than 400 people in a state are getting special protections and hate speech rules for themselves. And one of the rules is you're not allowed to say that group influences politics. That's your Republican Party, the father of the vaccine. Oh, yeah, he's going to save you. Daddy, daddy socialism. Like I look at Republicans now and I'm just I just shake my head. I'm like, it's I, I turn into Oliver Anthony. I just say it's a damn shame. People like me, people like you. It's a damn shame, you know? I turn into, I turn into that boy. Someone said, no one probably got paid. Well, that's another thing. They, they smear you in the press as anti-Semitic if you say that they got paid, but they obviously are getting paid from a lot of different people. It's like now lobbying is anti-Semitic. It's like, I, I call I call talking about big pharma anti-pharmatic because it's like if Trump takes a million dollars from Pfizer and then hires a pharma CEO or a pharma executive, is that anti-pharmatic? No, it's like literally what's happening. Like lobbyists from all industries and all groups pay politicians. But but it's a hate speech law now to say that there's any groups paying politicians like APAC. You can't say that. There's no lobbyists that pay Christy Noam or anybody. I don't know if APAC pays her, but I'm pretty sure they support a lot of candidates in both parties. So I don't know like what they're paying or what, but like it's, it's a deal. Like I, you know, I, I can explain it like for myself for an ad. I don't do very ma many ads cause I'm ethical. I get paid a, 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 an amount to do an ad. That's the exchange. And people are like, Oh, well th it's not that much money. $60,000, $70,000. What the hell are you talking about? Probably a hundred people to a hundred to 300 people who, who, who watch this stream make that much in a year that politicians will get in a second. And you're going to tell me it's not that much money. Well, Donald Trump only took a million dollars. A million dollars is a lot of money. He doesn't use his own money for campaigning. He uses your money. He doesn't even use his own money for his court cases anymore. He gets his people to pay for it. So it's like a million dollars is a shitload of money. Like, yes, it's not a billion, but it's like, 
There's also donors that pay Trump and GOP hundreds of millions of dollars. Look up Sheldon Adelson. He's like a huge donor. But I'm just saying it's like $70,000 is still a lot of money. It's like it all adds up. It's not, you know, you giving $15 they don't give a shit about until it adds up. But it's like you're going to tell me that taking $50,000 from a like there's no exchange. But if I do an ad for a couple grand that I'm doing the ad because they're paying me and I believe in it. But, it, but a governor can get 70000 and it's not a big deal. Like That's how stupid a lot of people are that pay attention to politics. They're so obsessed with the character that they just make excuses for these people. Like They're not selling out. Oh, they wouldn't sell out for that much money. They absolutely would. Like What else are they doing? Like Why, why take the money then? It's all, it's all like a, just a game, you know, but it's whatever. Someone said, Anomaly, everything you talk about, are you, you're trying to get me to like listen to your song, Sarah Holly, the Bob Holly band. I, I'll check it out. Or I'll, I probably, I, to be honest, I probably won't check it out, but somebody here probably will. I, I'm not saying I'll never check it out, but I, like, I just don't want to lie and be like, I'm going to check it out right after the stream. I got a thousand things to do. Looking up that song is not one right now. Do I get paid not to talk about fake ball earth? Dude, Eric, you come here and act like I, I've probably talked about Earth stuff more than like 99.9% .9 of people. But if I don't do it every day, then you just like call me a shill. It's like when when like Zionism doesn't come up for weeks and I'm just talking about other topics. And you're like, you don't talk about it every day, all day. I don't want to talk about it every day, all day. If I don't like, you know, I'd much rather never talk about it. But every day they pass like a speech law and it's like I then talk about it again. Or Ben Shapiro wants you to work until you're 80 but you know, you shouldn't get that, but he wants to give your money to another country. Then I talk about it, but you know, it's like, just cause I don't talk about the earth all the time. If you want flat earth content, go to like somebody who talks about flat earth all the time. I'm clearly not that guy. As I showed with my video, I play soccer. I play basketball. I'm a hip hop artist. I'm a news analyst. I do. I wear, I wear a lot of hats. Dreamrare.com. I don't, uh, you know, I'm not like a flat earth in like a aficionado. You know, I'm not one of these guys that is just like a one trick pony. I'm not mad at these guys. It's just like you come here and you like yell at me in all caps like it's going to do anything. Um, all right, Eric, you're good, bro. Spaceball is an awesome film. That is a funny movie. I forget like uh, what the guy's name is, John Candy or something. That's a good one. My advice is don't read as many comments. Well, unless I change the format of the show, I don't read comments for like at least 30 minutes, 40 minutes sometimes. And then I read the comments because, you know, I'm not, I don't really have an agenda like after I cover the stories that I want to cover. So I just kind of play off of the comment section. That's like the good and the bad. You know, some people don't like it, but some people do like it. That's like part of the show. Anomaly, are you going to watch Messi in the Copa America this year? Probably Messi and Di Maria's last dance in the tourney. I don't know what time it's on because of like foreign games, but if I could catch a game, yeah, I would like to watch it. But I, you know, I usually watch the world cup, but some of the other tournaments I don't really watch anymore, but I do like soccer for sure. Uh, I'm sorry to say all of politics is broken. We have to pick the worst of the worst. The point that I'm trying to make though, and I know I say this a lot, but it's, it, it's only repetitive because people always say it back to me optimism like if you look up optimism in the dictionary it doesn't say pick one of two politicians and believe in them and then cry like a little baby if if they're not who you thought they were optimism doesn't derive from trump or biden or democrats and republicans like that's not being optimistic it has nothing to do with politics although politics is a part of life for some reason, people's heads are so far up Trump's ass in the Republican Party, they think optimism means living in Trump's, you know, I almost said uterus, but like stomach or something. And like, you know, if, if he's not going to save them, then they're pessimistic and black pilled and they have no future and they're going to cry and they're going to poop their pants and they're going to be poopy pants boy. Like, that's not what optimism means. So it's like, I tweet something and people are like, you're so angry. I'm like, I'm not angry. You're, you're not pe pessimistic. And it's like the dude literally had his face painted in like de de Detroit Lions. He's like professional sports fan in the bio. And it's like, dude, these NPCs, uh, you know, get so upset at me. It's like, he's just like, it's just so stupid. But it's like, you, you can't believe a lie and just be like, I'm optimistic. Like, if it doesn't happen in four years, like you can't just ride the train until the wheels fall off. Like, 
at a certain point, you're going to be like, okay, like I do believe in America's future, but it's not going to be this guy. It's, it's a play along game. You know, hopefully I can inspire people because at the end of the day, like I'm not telling everyone has to be like successful at sports or something like everybody's not made to do that. Everybody's made to play their role. But at the end of the day, whether you're a mother, a father, a single guy, a woman, you know, you know, whatever you are, no matter what your job is, you're the main character in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like God made you to enjoy your life, to live your life. It doesn't mean you can't like other people, but like your role is not to be like subservient to a politician that doesn't give a shit about you. Like that's not what your role is. So if everybody believed in themselves and loved themselves and worked towards being the main character in their life and being a better main character in their life, this country would be better. But the reason that politics is so popular now is because one, things are going to shit, but nobody wants to like take accountability for it. So they're blaming other groups or they're blaming the left or and they're, you know, that's why I say Christians. Cause it's like, if I sat here and blame other religions every two seconds, they'd say I'm anti-Islam, anti-Semitic, whatever. But it's like, I'm Christian. So I'm saying I'm going to blame my quote unquote people. Although I like everybody. It's not like I only like Christians, but it's like, I'm not going to sit and blame other groups for lobbying to pass speech laws. It's Christians that are passing it. You know, Trump pretends to be a Christian. Christy Noam, she's not Jewish or Muslim, to my knowledge. And uh, Ron DeSantis says he's a Catholic. Like, these are the people passing the laws. So, you know, they deserve just as much, if not more, blame. It's not like I blame other groups. I'm literally like, why are conservatives doing this? But it's this, like, dynamic of, like, nobody wants to be the main character in their life. So they just sit and, like, watch these scammers and act like they're not scamming you. But if every man in America was, like, a real man or at least half of a real man. I'm not a perfect person by any means, but it's like, there's no like oomph or no soul. Like there's, there's nothing there. Like everybody's just like empty vessels. That's why they like, just are like, oh, I think optimism is this guy's going to fix my life. Like, how is that guy going to fix your life? You know, like no matter who wins the election, I mean, might be better or worse, but you got to have the mindset of like, I'm going to deal with it and make moves either way. Um, am I a Democrat? No. Are you dumb? Are you a Democrat? What? Like, I don't. Is your IQ like 17? Anomaly, give us Facebook commentators some love. Salam, what's up? Appreciate you, my man or woman. I don't. I can't see your profile picture, but I appreciate you. I, you, I did see your profile picture. It just wasn't a, it wasn't a face. It was like a star. So appreciate you, but. It's just, I see all the comments and Facebook doesn't come up as much. Facebook is my biggest platform, but they don't show my live streams as much anymore. They're trying to go to like Instagram reels on Facebook. It's like me playing soccer gets more views than some of my other stuff. Like maybe I'll just juggle soccer balls from now on. Cause like, I think it got like 30,000 views on Facebook, but then I do like a serious reel. Like it's like 15,000 and I do a live stream. Sometimes it gets like a hundred thousand other times it won't. So maybe I'll just play soccer. Someone said all hate crime legislation is anti-First Amendment. A crime is a crime. Th these are not, they're going to say these are hate crime legislations, but they're not. They're hate speech legislations. It's speech rules. They're s phrases that they're saying are hateful. That's what this is. It has nothing to do with a hate crime, but they're going to say that a crime is now a hate crime because someone said something and committed a crime. A crime is a crime. I don't like, you could document what they're saying if you want, because it, it, it's helpful, but like, you know, anybody who commits a crime against any group, any race, any religion, as especially like violent crimes is a piece of shit. Anybody who steals, I don't care if a Christian stealing from a Muslim or a Muslim stealing from a Jew, it's all evil. Stop being, stop stealing. Theft is bad. Like why, why does America have to say that it's worse if one group does something to another group? Like it's all wrong. Like in a functional society, everyone should feel comfortable and safe to not get robbed. But like, what they're doing is they're trying to pass hate speech laws and say that they're stopping hate crimes, but the, has, the, the legislation has nothing to do with hate crimes. It's all about speech. But I don't even, like a hate crime to me, I talked about it yesterday, it's like burning an LGBTQ flag and now you hate gays and now they're going to throw you in jail. But if you burned an America flag, that's free speech. That's To me, that's what like hate crimes do. It's like Jesse Smollett did this, so now you're a racist, but if someone else did it, you're not. It's like, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it evil? Is it true? Is it false? This is the world I live in. It's not like, oh, you know, even with other ethnicities and religions and stuff, it's like, it's not like I'm sitting here being a hypocrite. It's just like, I'm, I'm tired of the, 
I'm tired of the double standards. It's just annoying. VHS quality said, nice hair, dork. Wow, dude. I'm so dorky. You're so cool. I bet you're just so awesome, dude. VHS quality. That's shitty quality, bro. I'm 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 living life in 4K. You're on a VHS life, so level up, bro. Nice hair, dork. It's like that. This is what these loser men will say to me. Nice hair, dork. It's like, yeah, totally, bro. So cool. You're so you're so awesome. Someone said, bro, USA men are cuck now, not even in the know. All men should be ready to uh lost that one. Sorry. Bro, NASA's lying to you, someone said. Okay. Salam said my hair's cool. I, I mean, I don't care. It's always like other grown, jealous men that talk about me. It's not women. I've never had a problem. They're always like, oh, you should be like me. And I look at their profile and I'm like, why would I want to be like you? You know, it's never like really impressive people that say that. It's always people where I'm like, dude, I'm running circles around you in every aspect of life. But I'd never say that to you. But you, you start talking shit to me. It's like, who are you? You know? Uh, do I know Congressman Larry McDonald? Did make, did he have a farm? E I E I O. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. Someone said, I'm jealous of your hair. I'm bald. I never, I, uh, God bless you, my guy, but it's like, I'm not trying to make people hate jealous. I'm not trying to make bald people feel bad. That's not my intention. I apologize. Have I ever played soccer stoned? in my entire life yeah for sure like recently no not that i recall do i think trump could have been the poisonous snake in the poem he reads a lot of people like to say that i never said it but i've seen it said a lot i don't necessarily disagree someone said mark robinson yeah i see the media getting really mad at that guy so he must be cool um we'll see though I'm sure Mark Robinson will have to go through some humiliation ritual within the next three months, apologize, and put, get back on the right track, you know? Someone said, Anomaly, just wanted to make sure you aren't insecure about your hair. Larry McDonald was a senator who began exposing Rockefeller and then died in a plane crash. No, I didn't know about that. No, I don't. I don't. Obviously, I don't care about my hair. Why would I be self-conscious? I'm just like making fun of people when they like make fun of me. It's like, they're always like, you, it's like, whatever. I need to pass a law that no one can make fun of my hair to prove that I'm not self-conscious. There is now an anti-anomaly hate speech law. You're not allowed to say that my hair is dorky. You're not allowed to criticize my hair. Then you'd criticize other hair. You're not allowed to say my hair is similar to biblical characters. You're not allowed to say that I own a media company. You're not allowed to say that I'm good at banking or, you know, politics. You're not allowed to criticize me more than you'd criticize another influencer. You're not allowed to say that I have more loyalty to my hair than I have to the American nation. And uh, it's anti anomaly if if you uh, don't play along. And, and because I'm passing all these laws in every state, that proves that I have no power. And uh, you're just hater if you if you think that way. So, you know, that's, we got to, that's the American way is to do it like that. Just outlaw, outlaw any critiques and then, and then say that it's hate speech to say that you're doing it, you know, it's so crazy. And then someone like Ben Shapiro goes on stage and he literally says, he's like, the existence of Israel is a guarantor that I'm loyal to America. And I'm like, wait, what did he just say? He just said, because Israel exists, that's why Ben Shapiro is loyal to America. And then you read these hate speech rules and it says you're not allowed to say that anyone has dual loyalty. It's like, but didn't he just say that he do does? Did, like, isn't that what he just said, though? Like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, if, if you're my Mexican friend, you're like, I like Mexican and America. It's like, okay. Or if you're like Armenian, you're like, what's up, bro? I like Armenia and America. It's like, for sure. You know, I get it. Like, I, it's not my job to tell you what country to like, but it's kind of crazy when someone's on stage being like, I like this country. And you're like, oh, you like that country? And then they're like, oh my gosh, no, that's hate speech. Oh my gosh. And then they're all passing these laws. And then like people are trying to gaslight me into pretending like it's not happening. It's like, I know that it's happening. Um, Anomalophobia is a big L. 
dude, there's a lot of people. They're just afraid of me. They're afraid of the truth. They're afraid of like my hair. They're afraid of my hats. They're afraid of my merch. Anomaly phobia is horrible. I need a hundred million dollars in, in government money, uh, you know, as subsidies and reparations for all the hate. And then also I need, you know, to send billions of dollars to like another country that's then going to give it to causes that I like and call everyone hateful that says that, that they shouldn't have it. I mean, you know, but those darn liberals though, right? It's only the liberals doing this, right? Hey guys, it's only the libtards. Am I right? Oh, Benny Johnson based. Oh my gosh. Oh, Senate Speaker Johnson's based. He's a Chad. Oh, he's such a Chad. Oh, we're, we're crushing the left. Oh, 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 we're crushing the libtards. Drink their tears. And everyone's like, I wonder why my country's going to shit. Must be the left, right? I mean, they they do suck, but you get it. Um, let's see. I'm only afraid of you dumbing things down and helping totalitarianism. As long as you say what's right, I'll watch. Well, you're here now, so it looks like I'm doing a good job. I'm doing my best, folks. You should let us call in sometime. I have a lot to think about over the next year, but, I, you know, anytime I make a move, I always want to make things better. So there'll be a time where I switch stuff up and try to make it better. I don't know about the calling in possibly. Um, could be fun. Could be crazy. So we'll figure it out. I just don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I will eventually like my goal within the next year, I want to build like a whole new studio. Like I have, you know, the next thing I invest in, I'm going to get a piece of property probably and just try to make each room kind of like I'm, I, I want to really make things more professional. And in the last year or two, it's not like I've been waiting because I do my own thing, but I've had offers and situations where I'm like, okay, I wouldn't mind working with a company that does other stuff so I could do what I'm good at and focus on other stuff. But uh, it didn't work out. To be honest, I'd rather work with good people that help a little bit because I wouldn't want to change what I'm doing, but I would like professionals around me. This way I could focus on other stuff. You know, people saw me play soccer and they're like, wow, that was really good. Like even people from Brazil and people that are like, they're like, dude, you're really good at tricks. Like I'm not going to do anything with soccer. I mean, I'm, I can make trick videos or whatever, but at this point it doesn't make sense to like focus on that. But like I do do hip hop music. I, I am playing at the biggest rock festival in the country. Like I want to make more music. There's a lot of things I want to do that I don't have time to do because I'm doing so much production with this. I'm not trying to stop this. I just want to work with people. So I only have to do my show after my show. I got to upload stuff, this, that. It takes like hours. So, you know, I would love to work with the right team so I could free up my time to do other stuff. If I can't, I'm going to keep doing it. I just want to do it better. But I would like to find people to work with this year, even if it's like one or two people and just like bring great people together to do stuff. Um, that that would be ideal. My book, it's another thing, dude. I, it's like I got to do taxes like, you know, next month is April. I'm doing taxes I, like it's like I want to do a lot of things. I just don't have time. Someone said Trump loves you, Anomaly. He wants you to take his beautiful vaccine. Don't deny it unless you're a Democrat. Listen, okay. Listen to me, uh, RX880. I like your name. It sounds like R2D2 Star Wars. Speaking of Star Wars, I did something called Operation Warp Speed, and my vaccines are really fast. Some people say faster than Darth Vader. Just super fast, speed of light, Operation Warp Speed, you get it. We give a lot of money to the pharmaceutical industry, like tens of billions of dollars. We made max profits, and uh, I don't know. I just think, uh, you know, Joe Biden, is sucks, and uh, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Hell yeah, that's my guy. It's the Fauci vaccine. It's not the Fauci vaccine. It's mine. I did it. It's me. It's Donald Trump. It's Trump, baby. It's Operation Warp Speed. It's me. It wasn't the FDA. It wasn't even Pfizer. It was me. It was me. Without me, there's no vaccines, okay? And then his supporters are like, yeah, it's Fauci. He's like, no, it's, it's mine. And they're like, I'll just pretend like you never said that and just keep playing along. I go, okay. Might work, might not. I look like Keanu Reeves. I don't think I look like Keanu Reeves, but listen, I'm confident enough. I don't need any more praise. People are like, you're better than Brad Pitt. I was like, let's slow down. You know, like I like, 
I love myself. I'm not like a hater of myself. I, I would say I'm confident. I have a high self-esteem. I don't need to be compared to like Keanu Reeves or Brad Pitt. I think I have enough confidence, but I appreciate you guys. You're like, you're better than Brad Pitt. It's like, let's not, let's not go there. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to walk around thinking that. I, I don't think, I don't even think I look like Keanu Reeves. Obviously I don't look like Brad Pitt, but I do appreciate the compliments. <laughs> uh yeah i mean i guess like considering that he's just an actor i get people are like you're you know he doesn't say anything he just like shills like hollywood but it's whatever mm, hold on sorry i'm better than the rock yeah i'm also stronger than him i could probably beat him up no i'm just kidding yeah, I mean, I, these people are not necessarily like impressive as like, you know, leaders or anything. They're not doing anything like spectacular, but I appreciate it. Highly doubt there's an election. I'm going to say this one more time. They canceled the election in Ukraine and most Democrats and half the Republican Party agreed with it. They started allowing the arrest of Israel, Israeli citizens who criticized what was going on. Um, Republicans not only don't say anything, but they passed hate speech laws to stop you from saying something about it. So I don't even think this country deserves an election. I don't want this country to fall apart. I, everything in my body wants this country to stay afloat because if it doesn't work out, it's not good for me. It's not good for anybody, but it's like, I don't benefit from this country falling apart. But I think that this country deserves to fall apart. I don't think there even deserves to be an election. I'm not saying there shouldn't be one, but it's like the Republican Party is passing hate speech laws in America to stop you from talking about a country that's arresting citizens who talk about their war policy and another country that's uh, not even having an election this year. It's like both parties are begging to not have a real election. I'm sure they'll have one, um, but it's like Amer everybody thinks they deserve. I, I hate to be repetitive, but it's like, I don't, I'm not that type of person. Like, it comes, people saw my soccer video and they're like, wow, you're way better than I thought you were going to be. I'm very athletic and I'm very competitive. And I'm the type of person, I'll be down 10 points with three minutes left. I still think I could win. I have like a real competitor's mentality. I never give up. I never quit. I, I hustle hard. I work hard. That's the type of person I am. So I'm not sitting here saying I want things to go to shit because I don't. And I'm doing everything I can to stop it from happening. But I personally do think that like, I'm not one that blames the ref or blames the other team. It's like, no, we've played bad. We deserve to lose. We deserve like Republicans have created an economy to tell people that they deserve all these things just because they like Trump or listen to Charlie Kirk. And the truth is you don't deserve anything. You absolutely deserve to lose your first amendment. You absolutely deserve to be, you know, ruled under a lockdown. Like if you can't call out what's going on, you don't deserve freedom. The First Amendment's the most important amendment. Republicans have been selling it out since 2019, and nobody talks about it. Prager, you won't talk about it. Charlie Kirk won't talk about it. And they blacklist everybody who does talk about it. And they smear you, and they call you names in the press, and then they say that it's hate speech to say that it's even happening in the first place. It's diabolical. The Republican Party sucks, you know, but nobody wants to say that. So we deserve things because the left sucks. The left does suck. But it's the truth, you know? Like, I don't... I don't believe that. Like, I don't think I deserve anything. I think I worked for everything I have. I don't, I don't deserve a million, 1.6 million followers. I worked for it. I don't deserve a billion views. I worked for it. I don't deserve an income. I worked for it. And if it goes away, then I got to figure something else out. I don't like that. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing I got. I just deserved. I earned it all. And that's why I got it. And the second that I stop earning it, I'll lose it just like anyone else will. That's life. You know, it's like, Everybody just thinks they deserve everything all the time just because they like someone or something. I, I can't really, I don't understand it. Um, Anomaly, will you have Will Witt on? He's in a similar boat to you. He doesn't talk about politics as much and he's for, focusing on personal accountability. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Will. I'll bring him on the show in the next couple of weeks. I actually really like Will Witt. Um, we both lived in LA for a little while and I'm, you know, I would, I don't consider myself friends with many people, but I would say Will Witt's a friend. We hung out quite a bit. He's a very genuine guy. And, uh, you know, he worked for Prager for a while. I don't know if he still does, but he was just always a good guy. We went to an event 
one time and stuff. So Will Witt is a, is a solid guy. I like him a lot. If you guys want him on the show, I'd love to see where he's at because, uh, yeah, I got nothing bad to say about that guy. When are you dropping music? Uh, sh- I don't know. I t- Today I'm going to literally like try to work for five hours after this and do music and all these things that I'm not doing. Taxes, I got to add stuff up and, you know, do my like sheets and stuff. But, yeah. I saw Will talking about raw milk and I thought that that was super base. So yeah. Yeah. He dude, He's, he's a great guy, man. Like I, we, I, we used to hang out and it was like Fleckas, Elijah, Will Witt, like everybody lived in LA for a certain time. And, uh, Will, Will's a solid guy. He, he was always cool to me. Never did anything weird or like sideways. Like we were always kicking it. And, uh, yeah, just I, like, I, it's cool to see his progression too. Cause it seems like he's kind of just not trying to you know, he, I think he's a, a legit guy. So I think he's not trying to, when you, when you enter politics, like me or will, you realize what it really is. And like, you have two routes, either you become one of these people or you do something else. Like the, it's like, those are the two options. So like either you become super, super phony or, or you figure out a way to make a living doing kind of that, but going in your own route. And it seems to me like will Witt found a way to make a living doing it in his own way. Cause he didn't want to, you know, turn into like a politician or like one of these people that's just super cringe and fake. So, you know, I think we've been in the game for a while and everybody sees what it really is. You just have a few routes you can go, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to just be like good and authentic and, and work with certain groups. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just like, you know, everybody sees it. Someone said Molyneux stayed fairly legit. I haven't seen his stuff, but I mean, I don't think he ever really worked for anybody, right? Stefan Molyneux, he got deleted off Twitter. He never should have. Uh, he always said interesting stuff. Didn't didn't he just work for himself? I don't think he ever like had to work for another corporation. He just seemed like he ran his own channels, but I'm not really super familiar with it. He's on Odyssey. Yeah, he never should have got deleted from Twitter. He, why did he not get his account back? Like everyone got their account back. Like I don't, I can't believe they didn't give that guy's. He he had a great Twitter feed, Stefan Molyneux. Is Fleckas fake? No, I like Fleckas too. I, we talked about him the other day. Someone brought him up. I wouldn't say Fleckas is fake. I don't think he's fake at all. Fleckas is just like, he's very like quirky, you know? He's very unique and he has like his own sense of humor. I wouldn't say he's fake at all. Like he's just, he's just very like in his own zone. He's another one where he's not trying to, I don't think Fleckas really gives a shit about anyone else, like in a good way. Like he's not trying, like he doesn't, I don't think Fleckas cares who likes it or, you know, what anyone thinks. I just think he, Fleckas likes comedy and he's just trying to do his own humor. So yeah, he was cool too. No, no, nothing bad to say about him. They canceled uh, Stefan Molyneux for saying Taylor Swift should have a baby because her eggs are drying up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure that's what he got banned for. He was like, Taylor Swift is an old hag and she needs to have a kid because her, <laughs> her eggs are drying up. It was some like savage tweet about Taylor Swift. And then he just got kicked off. And I was like, dude, that's like, I'm not saying like he's a comedian, but like comedically, that was hilarious. Whether you agree with it or not, that tweet was a banger. I'm still laughing about it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why he got kicked off. But uh, how's, come on, that's, that's funny. I know it's not like the nicest thing anyone's ever said, but like, you know, if, if, uh, if like Tony Hinchcliffe said that on a stage, everyone would be laughing hysterically. But Stefan Molyneux says it on Twitter, and now we have a hate crime. You know, it's just like, whatever. I wouldn't say it, but he did, and I laughed at it. So one day you're going to get in trouble for laughing too. You know, like someone will say something funny that they deem like sexist, and then you'll laugh, and then you'll get in trouble for laughing. It's kind of like that now. It's like, did you like a post? And you're like, yeah, I absolutely did. They're like, yeah. You're like, yeah. They're like, okay. You're like, okay. Dan said Ben Shapiro's show is a lot better than yours. It's definitely 
better produced. I'm not going to lie about that. It's way better produced, but it's like, listen, listen, okay, listen, I believe in free speech, okay, except for one country, okay, that makes you hateful if you talk about it, okay, I don't think, I don't, I don't think you should get social security, okay, but we should give your money to this other country, okay, it, it's well produced, but it's all like psyop, like conservative psyops to like not believe anything he actually says. He's like, listen, okay, it's not hate speech when I talk about Muslims on a college campus, okay? They shouldn't protest me, okay? But their protest should be shut down, okay? And I'm going to use the exact same examples they use and say it's, it's hate speech, okay? It's like, you know, you got to be a special type of stupid to still be watching that show, but knock yourself out. Uh, Brandon sent a lot of money over to Israel. Trump sent a lot of money over to Israel. Yeah, but Brandon sends money to Israel and Ukraine, and probably Trump will just send money to Israel or something. I don't know. And Trump wants Europe to pay for Ukraine. It's like that. Those are your options. You're like, like they're getting the money. It's just like, who's going to pay him? Trump's like, I don't want to give Ukraine more money. Europe needs to give them money. I'm like, why does Europe need to give them money? Like, I get it. It's better if they give them money than we give them money. But like, why does Europe need to pay Ukraine? How, like, it's not, this is, this is all I'm going to say. It's not in Europe's best interest. Like th these wars, the media tries to trick you into thinking these wars are in your best interest. They're not. How is making Ukraine gay or going to save the world? Like I don't like what what Zelensky's a horrible leader. What are they going to fight for 30 years? Is Ukraine ever going to beat Russia? They're not going to win the war. So what are they going to do? Like fight for 20 years, get a trillion dollars, probably take a lot of it and then like, you know, make a deal in 15 years. How in best interest or america's best interest it's not whose interest is it in hmm i wonder who who's who's benefiting from this war blackrock's gonna benefit from the war because they're gonna re rebuild ukraine to the like 800 billion dollars so but we need some good we need some blackrock speech laws because the the ceo of blackrock there's too much criticism so you know thank goodness they're passing speech laws in america to make it harder to you know, call out the CEO of BlackRock. Thank goodness we have the Republican Party to pass hate speech laws. That's what we need. Because that's how we're going to beat Joe Biden, right? How do we fix it? By just paying attention and knowing that it's happening and saying no. But there, there, there's no, like, there's no real, there's no, like, real th threat to this because it's all, like, everyone, RFK, Trump, and Biden, it's just like a, it's like a, character show where there's pros and cons to all of them but like it doesn't really matter but like instead of paying attention to everything and just calling it like they see it people pick a character it's like when you play tekken and they're like choose your character and you know you're like raiden you know it's like uh you just like choose a character that's what people think politics is but like you're the character you get what i'm saying like you're the character you're not rfk or trump so if all of them are doing the same thing, then it's like, it's not your job to pick a character. It's your job to say that it's happening. And as soon as people realize that it's happening, it's not going to happen anymore. The only reason it keeps happening is because no one realizes it. Like it's, it's, it's insane that people think that Trump's going to fix the economy when he's the one who imploded the economy. And then Joe got, Biden got in and imploded it more. It would be like if there was a 50 foot hole in the middle of the desert and Trump blew it up 20 feet and then Biden blew it up 30 feet. And you're like, we need to get someone who won't blow it up. And you're like, we're going to go back to, we're going to go to Trump. He fixed, like he blew it up though. Like you could say Biden blew it up more, but the, like, it's just insane that Republicans think that Trump's going to fix the problems that he literally did. And in order to like, not realize what why it happened they just keep lying to themselves telling them that he didn't know what he was doing or he didn't mean to do it listen i'll be interested to see what he does because it could go in a lot of different directions if he wins it's just like i i'm listening to the guy and like he listened to joe biden's speech and the two things he said are the two things that i talk about often it's because that's all they care about he talked about the pharmaceutical industry in israel that's what Trump did. He said, I did the vaccine and I was better to this foreign country. That's all. That's what they're competing over. That's what RFK is competing over, except he's not good for pharma. Uh, that's what Trump's competing over. And that's what Biden, they're not like, they're not talking to you. They don't give a shit about you. They're like, look, look at me. I'm a good, I'm good. I did good for you. I'm good for you. 
they don't need to impress you because you're everyone's so easily impressed. So it's like, if that's what Trump thought of when he listened to Joe Biden's speech was like pharmaceuticals in Israel. Of course, that's like the Republican party. That's like all they care about. You know, everything else is just like a front or like, a, Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's like, okay. And I don't, uh, well, pharmaceuticals, I mean, I'm totally against pharmaceuticals, not like every pharmaceutical, but I don't think big pharma needs any money or like authority like they're getting from the government. But when it comes to Israel, if they could be our ally, but not take a hundred billion dollars from us over time and not call everyone anti-Semitic all the time, then I would say, yeah, that's a great ally. There's nothing wrong with having a friend in the Middle East. I'm not against Israel. I don't think it shouldn't exist. I don't believe any of that. It's like, I'm not it's not my job. Like it's like Ukraine shouldn't exist. Like who am I to tell who, who to exist? It's not my job, but it's like, I, I don't like speech laws in my country that like I'm allowed to shit on America and say whatever I want about my own country, my own religion, but I'm not even allowed to say Ben Shapiro has loyalty to Israel. Like these are the laws they're passing. So it has nothing to do with hate. And I don't dislike that country. I don't, it's not like about me choosing favorites and whatever. It's just, you know, like, and then it's like, if I have an opinion about it now, because of everything that's going on, then they'll say you're hateful where it's like, I don't have to like Ukraine as much as I like Italy. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean I hate Ukrainians. It just, it, Ukraine is screwing us over right now. So you have every right to dislike Ukraine over other countries. And it's like with Israel and Palestine, I understand the atrocities and the horror that happened on October 7th. And I think it's evil and disgusting. But killing tens of thousands of kids is also insane. But you're like, no, like, you know, that's not going to make the world like you. Like more people now disagree with Israel than ever because of their response. And now the media in America is just going to pass laws to say you can't talk about it. You think that's going to make it more popular? It's counterproductive. It only makes people notice more. It only makes people like more annoyed by it. So it's like these, these tactics like, oh, you can't talk about us more than another country. I don't want to. I'm not trying to talk about any country, but Ukraine's taking a hundred billion. You think I care about Ukraine? Like in the sense of like, oh, I really just hate them. I never thought to even talk about Ukraine until they started taking all our money. That's why I talk about Ukraine more than other countries. And Israel, the reason that a lot of people talk about Israel more than other countries isn't because they hate the people there. It's because that country is more involved. They take more foreign aid than any country has over the last 50, 60 years. There's speech laws in our country being passed that say you can't talk about it. They're, um, you know, largely connected to American foreign policy. Like there, there's a reason that they get talked about more. It's not because out of hate. It's just like, would you talk about like Norway as much? Probably not. Why do you hate that country? And do you like Norway more? It's because Norway's not really doing anything. They're just like chilling there. You know, like, I don't know what Norway's doing probably a lot of gay stuff to be honest. Cause like every Europe, everything's gay now, but I don't, you know, as far as like, it's, it's like passing a law to, to dictate how much you talk about something is just like screaming guilty. You know, it's just like, it's just so annoying, but it's whatever. Kron said, it's not my anything. This stream just blows. Thank you for watching a stream that blows. I don't know. It says a lot about whatever you're doing in life because it's like I don't I, I don't even have time to watch things I want to watch. I'm so like busy and having a good time. I like I can't imagine watching a stream for 10 minutes that I don't like. It's hard for me to even have 10 minutes in, in a stream I do like. So if you have the time to watch a stream you don't like for 10 minutes, that's sh a shocking use of your time. Someone said, isn't it illegal laws against speech? Um, I think that, honestly, I think the Supreme Court will probably overturn it at a certain point. Like Trump passed an anti-Second Amendment bump stock ban and the Supreme Court is currently working to overturn it. Like it just takes a long time for whatever reason. So when did Trump pass the bump stock ban? Let me look it up. Uh, let me see. Trump, hold on, sorry. Trump bump stock ban. Trump passed a bump stock ban after the Las Vegas massacre, whenever that was. And now in 2024, oh, 2017. So Trump infringed on the Second Amendment in 2017. And the Supreme Court is now having a conversation about it in 2024. It took seven years. So 
the anti-Semitism speech laws, they're coming from a definition that was created in 2015 or 2016, and they started getting passed by Republicans. Trump and DeSantis were the first ones, according to my knowledge. Maybe Nikki Haley was first or something, but in 2019 is when it hit my radar. So it might take them a few years, but I do believe that the Supreme Court will eventually overrule this stuff because um, it is against the First Amendment. You can't, like DeSantis is such a sneaky guy. And uh, I can say he's sneaky because he's Catholic, so nobody will accuse me of being anti-Catholic. But DeSantis is very sneaky. You know, he passed a speech law and he said, oh, this is a religious bill to protect religions. Let me read it. It's got 11 rules. Only includes one religion, includes an ethnicity of people that are non-religious, and it includes a foreign country. What type of religious protection bill is it? He didn't even include his own religion in the religious bill. So it's not a religion bill. He's a liar. You know, they're, they're, they're passing it. It's not, it's not constitutional. So they're finding every scam to try to figure out how to pass it into law. Or it's a religion bill for one religion and one, one atheist person of an ethnicity and, and a foreign country. That's what the bill's for. And then others will say they're passing it to investigate. Others will say they're passing it for this or hate. Like they, they, they're all figuring out how to pass it into law. Isn't that interesting though that they're doing that? So I do believe that probably the Supreme Court will eventually ban it. And if they do see this as a court case, there's going to have to be a big case that like, you know, brings it to the forefront. It'll be interesting to see who votes for it and who votes against it because it's hard to tell because, uh, you know, most Republicans, at least the politicians are totally in on it. So are the Republican or conservative Supreme Court judges going to rule with the First Amendment over a hate speech law? Or are they going to rule with a foreign country over the American Constitution? Are liberals going to do it or are liberals not? It, like this is one of those topics that it shatters the left right pal paradigm because it's like if you go if you like look at the Israel versus Palestine protests in America on the Palestine side, you have liberals that don't believe in free speech, that wear COVID masks, that pretend to believe in free speech, that block traffic and commit crimes. And it's like a crime is illegal. You could protest legally, but like once you block traffic, you're just an idiot. Like, um, but then on the right, you have conservatives who pretend to believe in the First Amendment who are now trying to shut down protests that aren't committing crimes and they don't believe in free speech. And it's like, dude, both sides are just full of shit on this topic. So it's hard to tell what the Supreme Court do. Like, oh, I, I don't know what it even means to be liberal or conservative anymore because it's all fake and mostly kind of gay. Only because it's funnier to say fake and gay than it is just fake. So, you know, I just threw it in there for comedic reasons. But, you know. Someone said Ben Shapiro has a longer, thicker blank than you, Anomaly. Dan, it's just getting weird, bro. I don't even want to answer that because, come on, bro. That was, <laughs> you're sus, bro. Very sus. Someone said highly entertaining. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, that kind of threw off the whole vibe. All right, we got 15 more minutes left, and we, you know, that's like a, it's like in the UFC when they hit this thing, and it says like, yo, you got 10 seconds left. It's like, all right, we got to wrap this stream up now. Dan ruined it for everybody. Someone said both parties are two wings of the same bird. They're so called so called conflicts are kabuki theater. I'm starting to think that because it, it is like good cop, bad cop, where it's like, oh, no, the, they did this. Now we have to pass this law. Oh, we got to lock down to beat China. The only way we're going to beat China is with an American made vaccine. Yeah, Patriots America. You know, and then the left is like, we don't want it. Wait, we want it. Wait, we don't want it. Wait, if it's Fauci, it was Trump. It's all like, beep, you know, it, it's like they all like do things and then like pretend to fight the other side. But it's not it, it's to me, it's really obvious now. It was plausible to think that Trump was like totally different for a while. And I'm not mad at it, but like 2020, it's like, come on, you know, like what, like you got to like really lie to yourself in order to not have any sort of skepticism. And then it's just been, it's just been weird since then, but I'm in a good place this year. Cause I stopped arguing with people on social media, like on Twitter and fa and like YouTube. Cause it's like these circular arguments and it just never ends. So, uh, you know, I stopped engaging in it. I'm just like, I'm not going to. I'll have a debate with somebody on stream, uh, just not like text-based arguments. Someone said Puerto Rican work ethic question mark. <laughs> Are you saying I have a, I'm, well, I'm only like a quarter to one eighth Puerto Rican. So I have more of a one eighth or quarter Puerto Rican work ethic. 
to be honest though my my grandparents i think all had good work or like my my parents all have good work ethics like uh you know i don't think it was just my puerto rican my italian grandfather had a good work ethic you know my polish grandfather i don't know if he had a good work ethic but he worked for sure but you could give it to one of my ethnicities that's fine i won't i won't consider it hate speech Dude, I can't even imagine, like, I mean, obviously, like, maybe I would think differently if I was raised differently, but, like, if someone said something crazy about Puerto Ricans, I just can't imagine, like, ever wanting hate speech laws, you know? Like, you can address it and be like, yo, don't say that, or you could laugh at it or whatever, but, like, imagine being like, you know what we need? Puerto Rican hate speech laws to stop people from making fun of us. That's the cringiest thing ever, is, like, pass laws for your, for your like, what? Like, you need a law to to stop someone from saying something like it's just so cringe you know i can't imagine that's why people will be like oh you're just hateful it's like i'm really not though it's just like and i'm trying to also kind of help because the thing is like you can't legislate popularity and honestly i feel like over the last like six months israel's less popular than they've ever been like i think most people don't they don't think about race they don't care about jewish or israel like most people in america like they never cared about this stuff they always liked israel or jewish stuff and like they never they never thought twice about it it was all the speech laws and the double standards and the and the victim mentality that has made more people talk about it like you know i'm not justifying what happened in october because there's no justification but it, i'm just saying like response is everything so it's like something something happened on 9 11 and then america did all these things in the middle east and it didn't necessarily make america better and we are responsible for our actions as well and if we spend a trillion dollars doing stuff and now everyone hates us that's just what it was the response from israel to just let loose on civilians and justify killing kids and civilians more people despise Israel now than than ever have. And it's it has nothing to do with left wingers or right wingers or the internet or or speech. It, it's actions and lack of self-accountability and lack of self-awareness. And the more stuff that they do, the more they want people to not talk about it and go crazy at people who do talk about it. And it's just making it less and less popular. So it's like, you know, it is what it is, but it's like you know, I, I would say this to other communities too, just like I talked to 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 Christians before, but it's like if you want to like destroy racism in America, you can't have special rules for certain groups and not talk about crime statistics and like inner city gang violence. Like that's not going to make people like you more. It's going to make people dislike you even more. And, and they're just not going to say it. And, and nobody's going to like it. It's the same thing with this. It's like, you can't just like legislate and say that it's like hate speech to say Ben Shapiro likes Israel. Like that's not going to make Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. It's not that he's unpopular because a lot of people like him but he gets ratioed on time all the time on Twitter. It's like, he's probably has more people that dislike him than like him. And it's because there is no consistency, like all his conservative opinions, he doesn't actually believe them for a certain group, but then it's not even like, it makes sense. He won't even allow people to talk about it. He just smears and goes after everybody that even mentions it. So it's like, it's just dishonest, you know? So it's like, you know, the, the speech is not going to stop. It's not going to make more people like Israel. It's probably made more people just annoyed that America's passing laws for another country. So it, I'm not coming from a place of hate or malice. It's just like you can't you can't do things and just like legislate people to like you. It just that's like doesn't it just like literally doesn't work, you know, and therefore in policy, like they got people on the news trying to explain how like a kid deserves to die because he voted for Hamas, but the election wasn't, it was like 15, 20 years ago. And like a lot of the kids weren't even alive and we can't even win our own election in America. How is an 18 year old kid responsible for their government when I don't even like my government? Like the, the, the logic has been just bad. And I'm not saying left-wing logic is good or Palestinian logic is good, but it's like, at the end of the day, it is like a PR game to some extent. And I think, uh, you know, more people are, are against Israel now than ever because of the response was so brutal. And so just like, you know, if we killed a few people at a church, oh, well, if we kill a few kids or a couple 10,000, 20,000, like how many people have died? 30,000 civilians? Like, dude, that, that's crazy. Like, is that happening anywhere else in the world? I mean, in Russia and Ukraine, the soldiers are dying, but are, are, are 20,000 civilians dying? I don't think it's really happening anywhere. So it's like, the, you know, obviously left-wingers talk about it and some right-wingers, but, you know, regardless of what people think or want to say, like most of the world sees it, like most of the kids see it, 
most of other countries see it. Everyone sees it. And it's like, you know, trying to legislate people from not talking about it is only going to create more people who didn't even notice it that now notice it. And it, it's like, I don't know where this is really leading. You know, I, I just don't think it's going to work per, per, personally, like the strategy of it, like, Christy Nome is now less popular than she's ever been. She's getting ratioed on Twitter every second. Everyone's calling her out for selling out her her, her state. Like, she, they, like these these things are not popular. It's just like now she's doing like dental ads and like smiling, saying she got her teeth fixed. It's like, what is she like a hot girl influencer on Instagram? Like, why is Christy Nome doing teeth fixed ads? Like, you know, she, she sells out the constitution and then does a teeth ad. I fixed my teeth at Texas dental or whatever. It's like, okay, did like what you got paid to do that or something? <laughs> like, it's just like, goo it's just kind of like goofy timing, but you know, I would assume that she's going to be, you know, she's going to be just like looked at as a clown now for the rest of her political career. She is hot. Obviously she's an attractive woman, but it's like, okay. Someone said young men trying to escape from Ukraine, getting caught and thrown into the grinder. Yeah, they don't want to fight because they're they, they can't win. Like what? Like look at the size of Russia. You think they're going to beat Russia in a war? Dude, we're killing Ukrainians. America is just setting them up to get slaughtered. It's it's insane. Like we, what we're we're not helping Ukraine at all. This is diabolical. It's like here, go fight Russia. Is America going to help us? Not really. Just give you a few weapons and stuff. Or is Europe going to join us? No then how the fuck are we going to beat Russia? You're not. You're just going to go die. And these Ukrainians, they don't want to go die. Some of them do, but it's like, you're not, like, how are you going to beat the entire massive continent of Russia in a war with American taxpayer money? Like, it's not going to work that way. So I'm sure a lot of them are escaping because they don't, there's like, what are, how are they, like, where are they going? What are they going to do? Who Like, it's disgusting. The people that claim that they're standing up for Ukraine and helping Ukraine, they're getting Ukrainians literally slaughtered. It's disgusting. Like, I don't hate Ukrainians. I don't hate Russians. I don't hate Palestinians. I don't hate Israelis. I'm just calling it like I see it. I don't wish harm on anybody, but it's like, you can't lie to yourself about what's going on and act like you're so moral. It's like, you you know, less and less people are believing it now. There's, there's so many more people in the last year or two that are not buying the propaganda. Like, I mean, even think about this. If you call someone anti-Semitic five years ago, it stings because it's like, dang, like they're trying to claim I hate people that I don't hate. And that sucks. Um, now they've called everybody anti-Semitic because like anybody who disagrees with Israel, they call anti-Semitic. So according to the news, half more than half the world's anti-Semitic now. And, and anybody that disagrees with Zionism is anti-Semitic. And it's like no one believes it anymore. So it's like, you know, they've called every protester, every student, every person, every right winger, every left winger. They've called Trump it. They've called Ted Cruz it. They've, called, they've used this word so many times that they could pass their little hate speech laws to pervert American law, uh, you know, through the Republican Party. But like as far as like the it, it doesn't like no one like, you know, like if you try to get left wingers to care, you called a right winger anti-Semitic. You're like, look, left wingers. He like, they don't believe it because you've called them that a thousand times for waving a Palestine flag. It's like you know, you. It's like it's it that word. It's same with all the words they've used, like sexist. Like, dude, does anyone care if you get called a sex? Someone said that to me. They were like a Republican. They're like anomaly is a sexist. I was like, it's not true, but I also don't care. Like that to me, calling me a sexist is like calling me like a you know two spirited non binary like you know water boy. Like it, it's like laughable. It's like, why am I a sexist? Like what? Like that word means nothing to anybody anymore. Mail shark said, I'm a mailman who went live with you in 2021. Just want to say, I appreciate your consistency. I've been rolling with you and David Knight since 2019. Thank you. Mail, mail shark. God bless you. And God bless the U S postal service. God bless you. Sarah Holly. Thank you. With the big super chat. My husband has watched you daily for five years. He respects you and says you are the only person who's not sold out and that you're a true leader. He wrote a song in God we trust by the Bob Holly band and simply wants you to show it. All right. I mean, I guess you lobbied me with that massive super chat. I'll write it down now. Uh, let me see. In God we trust by the Bob Holly band. Thank you. Thank you to your husband. I'm copying it and pasting it. I will listen to it now. Okay. How about that? Thank you so much. That was very generous. Got you. Um, Selim said, I must limit myself to two hours maximum of anomaly. After two hours, it's just, it's kind of like being in the sun too long. You just kind of get burnt out. You know, I understand. 
Uh, I left USA back to the Philippines. Okay. Well, good luck. God bless. Someone said you just sold out anomaly. Yeah, I sold out to the big super chat complex. You know, I mean, you give me a super a sixty dollars super chat, tell me to check out a song. I mean, I would just be kind of a dick to not check it out at that point. Like, what am I going to say? Oh, 60 bucks. That's it. I'm not. Oh, yeah. It's like, give me a $60 super chat. I'll listen to a three minute song. I mean, call it what you want. How do I feel about the libertarian party? I think it's a joke. Um, I like a lot of libertarians. I agree with a lot of their policy. I think they're right more than the Republican party about like 80% of stuff, but the party, like this is the problem with not being tribal, you know, like if you'd say to a libertarian, you guys fight too much, they'll say, no, we don't. And then they'll fight with you over not fighting a lot. Like libertarians, because they're so individualistic, they can't ever come together over anything because they're all a group of individuals. So it's like, I, I, I like being individualistic, but I do think that like, you know, you do need hierarchy and you need, people need to admit like who's the best and who's not and like what to follow. And I think libertarians, they're, they're never going to be able to organize because um, individuals do not control the world. Individuals don't, you know, run countries. Individuals don't become the top gang. Individuals don't become the best soccer team. Like every great or big thing that runs anything, whether it's good or bad or powerful, it's all, it's always a group, you know, a team, a tribe or something. It's like, you can't, libertarians have no chance because they can't come together over anything ever, uh, for the better, for the worse. So the party itself, I think is a joke and it's, 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 it's shittier than it was five years ago with the age of social media, the libertarian party should be able to get 15%, but they're just so all over the place that they can't. With that being said, I do believe libertarians are real conservatives about like 60 to 80% of stuff. And then I agree with conservatives on the other bit. Like I, I'm not completely libertarian. I don't, I don't believe in like libertarian concepts of policing. I think it's very naive. Like if you have a bunch of bros in New Hampshire saying, we don't want the police, it might work. Maybe you go to the South side of Chicago and say, Hey, we're doing libertarianism. It's not going to work. You know, it depends who like quality of people and just the mindset and the society and the culture it creates a nation. I don't, I don't think like, you know, anarchy and libertarianism creates a nation. Uh, and I, I only think it semi works when the people will work with it. So I don't think libertarianism really works full scale, full anarchy, but yeah, the nonviolence pact and stuff like that doesn't like that, 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 that works in a room with like libertarians. It doesn't work in like the real world. You gotta like, you know, f figure stuff out, but Someone said, I like O'Reilly. I think he's a libertarian. Bill O'Reilly was shilling the booster with Trump once he did that. Okay, let's compare two people. Just be honest. When Tucker Carlson left Fox News, right, or got kicked out of Fox News, Tucker Carlson became even bigger and like more important. When Bill O'Reilly left Fox News, he became irrelevant. You know, I'm not saying he, like no one watches him. He has, has a big fan base from like his show. But like he like when's the last time the last time I saw a Bill O'Reilly clip was him on stage with Trump saying he got the booster and told people not to boo. So it's like, you know, like Bill O'Reilly, he did not figure out how to become relevant on the Internet. In fact, he just like disappeared from. from but maybe he wanted to. I have no idea. You know, maybe he just wanted to go behind the scenes and coast to make money. Sarah Holly said, thank you. You don't have to show the song. Just a quick listen. That's all. Just one musician to another. Thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you, Sarah. No, I'm going to listen. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't planning on showing it. But uh, honestly, if I showed it, they'd probably copyright strike me and steal all my money. So, uh, you know, I can't I can't even play my own music on here. I have a sweet soccer video that I want to like upload and I can't even do that because they're going to, you know, they're going to like flag me or something. Let me see. Is my can I can I even like play my own freaking soccer video? Probably not. I don't know. Because I, I use this really cool song with my soccer video, but it, it's not as cool without the song in the background. Whatever. Someone said, I never thought I would stop being a libertarian. Then I quit drinking and got my act together. <laughs> Sorry. I, like, God bless you for stopping drinking. It's just funny where you're like, I never thought I'd stop being a libertarian. And then I stopped being an alcoholic. You're like, all right. Uh, yeah.
someone said what kind of never mind i'm not people no comment all right bioweapon only good song well i'm glad you like that song I, I wouldn't say it's my only good song but i do like that song bioweapon Can I interview Michael Richards? I'm not I'm not sure who that is. Uh use the you the music YouTube offers. Nah, I, I don't I don't want to. I like the song I played because it's like a soccer or samba song. What exactly is so bad about libertarians? I didn't say anything was bad about them. I just said I don't think it works. Like I, I just told you, I mean, um, like organization organization wise they can't come together on anything to have any sort of systemic power but also i just think it's naive like i i agree with income tax and a lot of their policies as far as like infringing on rights but when they when they go and they say like you know i i don't believe in the police force you shouldn't back the blue like listen i'm not a back the blue guy where it's like everything they do is right with no police like who's the strongest force on the ground it's going to be whoever is, is like, it's going to be like a cartel or a gang or something like, you know, you could say the police is a gang, but like, if it's not the police, it's going to be a cartel. And if you think not, like you must live in the suburbs or something, you know, like, like libertarianism would work in the suburbs maybe, but then a gang from somewhere else would just come and run through these people. And so it's like, you know, you can't just be an individual all the time. Like I, I'm a very individual person to perhaps to a flaw. I think I'm too individualistic to be honest. And it's, not i can't really help it to some extent but it's like uh you know like individual like uh, non-aggression packed no police like i think they just get their shit kicked in in any hood or any neighborhood and then once you have a functional society people from elsewhere will just come and rob you and you know come and uh, take advantage of any any weakness like you know but someone said you're criticizing non-viable anarchism not viable libertarianism well, I think viable libertarianism is is viable conservatism because you should take the best and worst of both worlds. Like income tax is a scam. A lot of things that they're doing is a scam. The conservative party isn't libertarian enough, but the libertarian party is too naive. So it's like functional libertarianism to me would be like an ethical Republican party that actually believed in the Constitution. And they did mostly libertarianism with some common sense like government policies. But you know, that's like, it's not happening. It's not happening in either party. So someone said these pro second A are afraid to call out the fake. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but someone said, I love you, Nami. You're the anti Shapiro we need. I'm not anti Shapiro. It's just, he's not consistent. Like all, you know, him, Dave Rubin and all these people, they, their whole career, they claimed that like the left would say they're violent and because of their foreign policy and they justified certain things that Israel has done, that they're violent and they're hateful and their hate speech leads to violence. And my whole life, I backed Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro because although I disagree with some of their foreign policy, you know, Ben Shapiro should be allowed to say his opinions on a college campus and mumble and, and sell sheets and whatever else he sells. Like I always had his back. But then him and and Dave, they want to outlaw Palestine protests and use the same faulty logic that liberals used against him and say that every Palestinian protest is this and that, and it leads to that, and it leads to this. It's not true. That's like saying every Ben Shapiro rally leads to that. It's also not true. So they're they're the exact same phony that they pretended to fight all these years, which is probably why they're there. They're, they're, they're just like a false paradigm where you just like watch them fight the left, but they're both the same. So you know, I'm not anti him. It's just, I, you know, I think he's wildly inconsistent on like every topic. I think he's wildly inconsistent on the first amendment. I think he's wildly inconsistent on foreign aid. I think he's wildly inconsistent on, you know, where he thinks that money should go. And like, I, I it's just, you know, I just, I just always saw, I always, I knew I've, I've known he, he was a fake since like 2019. So I probably should have just pretended like I didn't know that. And I probably could have got more gigs and stuff. But the second that you, you believe in the first amendment, they all blacklist you. They all come together and say, don't invite him to events. He's hateful. He hates us. He hates this. He hates that. Just because you believe that hate speech rules shouldn't be passed into legislation. People think I just say that stuff. They think I'm like, Oh, he's just, I know it. I know these things. Okay. I have millions of followers, billions of views. I know people at every news company. They tell me all the time, you know, this person won't invite you here. This person said you're anti-Semitic. 
person or not on the podcast. They don't want you here. I've heard this since 2019. Look at my videos from 2019. I even talked about this. I literally just one day I realized that DeSantis and Trump passed anti-Semitism hate speech laws. And I mentioned it from the day I mentioned it, my career was over in the Republican world. That's what the Republican party is, is doing. That's their main focus. And they pass laws to try to make the legal for you to say that it's their main focus. It's very diabolical. Um, but it is what it is. It's not, I'm not hateful. I'm not anti Shapiro. He makes some good points. Other points. He doesn't make good points. I don't consider him an intellectual. I don't think he's smarter than me. I don't think he could beat me in a debate. I know he couldn't beat me in a debate and I know he'll never debate me. That's why he debates 19 year old like lesbians. Cause he could beat a 19 year old lesbian. I would show everybody the truth and he wouldn't look very smart against me. That's why he'd never debate me. Um, I know he's wrong about these topics and I know he's not trying to be right because I know what his true intentions are. So it's like, I, you know, I've already figured it out. How is he more intellectual than me when he told black people to go get the vaccine and was shitting on Louis Farrakhan for telling black people not to get the vaccine? And then Ben Shapiro admitted he was wrong two years later because his wife's a doctor. And then he never took accountability and said he was wrong and did a shitty job reporting, which he did. And he, instead he said, oh, the government and Pfizer lied. It's not my fault. Oh, the government lied and Pfizer lied. It's only like, has, is that the first time it happened? If it's not the first time it happens, it's Ben's job as a news analyst and a journalist to, to, to point out that they've lied in the past and suggest that they might be lying now and at least speculate on it. He didn't do that. He lied to his audience. He misled his audience. He misled black America. Weirdly, he kept talking about black people. And then later he said, oh, it's not my fault, essentially. It's Pfizer and the government's fault. They lied to me and it's not my fault. Dude, he sucks. He's not smarter than me. He's not more honest than me. It's like his whole his whole show is like a killer, you know, like he, he just talks really fast, like a smarmy, like, and, and people think that's like intellectual. Like, how is that intellectual? He just talks really fast and mumbles like that doesn't doesn't mean like, you know, he must really smart and he talks slow. Like it doesn't it's talking fast doesn't necessarily mean you're smart or dumb, you know. Someone said Shapiro is way smarter than you, Anomaly. I mean, in some ways, he might be smart if he could get stupid people like you to believe he's smart and honest. Then clearly he is like good at manipulation and intelligent enough to make dummies like you think he's smart. But no, he's not. Do you think that do you think that he made a mistake with the vaccine? Like, why, why do you think he told black people to get the vaccine? He smeared everybody who talked against it. Why do you think he was pro vaccine mandate in 2019? He said that vaccine mandates in 2020 before the pandemic he said it's not libertarian because if you're muddying the water in a creek you can't muddy everyone's water suggesting that if you don't get vaccinated that you're you're muddying the water of america he literally said that and it's like how come he's mysteriously wrong about every major topic and makes zero sense about it like just because he talks really fast there's a special type of stupid that watch him and think he's smart you know Ben is like, he, he's, he's, he's good at convincing stupid people that he's smart, you know, but anybody that's actually intellectual see, sees right through his like speed talking, like, you know, give it, give all our money to a foreign country. And it takes me to say, I'm not doing it. It's like, wow, what a genius. Oh, I wish I was him. Why is he so smart? Well, dude, he crushed a debater. Who did he crush? A 19 year old fat lesbian on a college campus with blue hair. Wow. It's like Michael Jordan beating the shit out of like a tub, Tubby Johnson, some fatty, some fat white kid. that's a sophomore in high school. It's like, dude, you see Jordan? He beat the shit out of this fat kid. Okay. Like, what about, does he ever debate? Like, does, does Ben ever debate people like me or in, in, intellectual right wingers who know that he's lying? No, he only has on sold out pastors and stupid left wingers and Sank Uger who who looks, sounds, and acts like a water buffalo. Like he doesn't, he doesn't debate. Ben Shapiro doesn't debate intellectual right wingers. He blacklists them and and smears them, just like he tried to do to Candace Owens and everybody when the whole Yay thing was going down. It's like he doesn't debate. He just blacklists, smears, cries, lies, and then talks really fast and convinces naive boomers and dumb people that he's a genius. Like let's put it this way. Why do you think I was right about the pharmaceutical operation warp speed the entire time? And Ben was wrong about it for two years. Why do you think I knew that the government and Pfizer could lie? Cause they've lied in the past. And Pfizer has one of the biggest criminal settlements in modern history. It's not a secret. It never was. Why did I know that? And why did I report on that? And why did I tell the truth? And Ben mysteriously 
was wrong because he got tricked by Pfizer and the government. Let me know. If he's so much smarter than me, tell me why he did that. Because he's married to a doctor and you're not. So should I marry a doctor and, and get dumber? Would that make me smarter if I married a doctor and then got dumber because my spouse was a professional doctor? Like how would that how would that make me smarter? Getting dumber. It's like, you know, if if you married a doctor and got dumber, that then then you'd be smarter. Okay. Someone said doctors are not smart. Some of them are, but some of them are just obedient. You know, it depends what you do. Like, are you a doctor that does open heart surgery? That's incredible. Are you a doctor that sells pharmaceutical pills to children? Then you're a piece of shit. So it's like, you know, it would be like saying all lawyers are ethical. It's like, not really. Um, someone said being skeptical of everything and getting it right a few times doesn't make you a genius, dude. You're not answering the question though. I didn't. I didn't say I was a genius. It's just like, I'm smarter than him. So because he got the most important topic in recent history wrong and I got it right, it doesn't make me smarter because I just, like you're acting like I just guessed. I can, I can explain why I was right. Like I know about the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, the PrEP Act. I, I, I actually disagree with socialism. So when Trump does a pharmaceutical socialism scam, I don't say it's a good thing. Ben Shapiro said a socialist scam was good he didn't know anything like like th that makes him smart because he was wrong but i'm not smart because i just got lucky you sound like an idiot you know what i'm saying you sound like someone you sound like a ben shapiro listener like someone that's dumb enough to think that he's like really smart all right let me see someone said I like how he stood his ground in a debate with close to six people seated and one was a trans woman who was angry that Ben wouldn't address her as a female and he was born verbally. Wow, dude. It, it really takes a genius to debate some trans person that doesn't want, you know, like that that's genius level to you. Some trans person being like, Ben, call me by my pronoun. And Ben's like, no, I refuse. And then people are like, oh, uh, this is genius. It's like, Dude, you guys have a, a really low bar. It's like he got the entire pharmaceutical scam and lockdown thing wrong, but you know, he really told that trans that he wouldn't say their pronoun. Dude, any like any any rural worker could do the same thing. And I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm just saying like that like there's a hundred million people in this country that'll be like, I'm not calling you by my pronouns. Like that takes no intelligence. It just takes like conviction, you know? And I'm not saying workers are not smart i'm just saying like that's your level of like genius it's like it's like him just being like i'm not gonna call you by your pronoun and people are, wow that was so smart it's like that that's not smart that's just like ballsy i guess you know or like straightforward i would i wouldn't say it's like a genius but someone said ben will crush you in a debate and make you look like the fool he'll never debate me Guys, I've wanted to debate him since 2019. He'll never debate me. He's wrong. He doesn't believe in the First Amendment. He has double standards for a different country. He thinks it's hate speech when you talk about it. And his entire job is to, to run around behind the scenes screaming at people, calling them anti-Semitic, and blacklisting them. Not only does he not want to debate, not only does he not criticize the anti-First Amendment hate speech laws, he uses them. He literally, word for word, copy and paste what the hate speech laws say and tweets them. He would never debate me. They, they like when they can't debate, they do what liberals do. They call, they say you're hate speech. They say you're hateful. You know, he tried to blacklist and stop his own coworkers from having conversations with Kanye when Kanye was doing it. It's like, bro, you debate Sank Uger. Sank Uger sucks, you know, but you debate him. Why are you allowed to debate people and have conversations with people you disagree with, but other people can't? He's the ultimate snake. So it's, it's like, you know, that it's like, uh, he'll really crush you. I'd love to see it. I'd love to debate him. If I debated Ben Shapiro, I'd win. And then 25 media companies would call me anti-Semitic for the next year. That's what would happen. Just like when I interviewed Vivek. I interviewed Vivek one time, didn't mention Israel one time, didn't mention the speech laws one time. And mysteriously within a week, there's 25 different media publications calling me anti-Semitic because I talked about the hate speech laws on my Twitter. If you, if you talk about the laws, they call you that, you know? 
someone said he has a lot of people fooled cool it's not a show for fools you know uh vivek was unhappy with your interview i don't think he's ever received a serious interview from a conservative they literally just play patty cakes with them so i mean that's another thing it's like my point with that is simple listen as a person god bless the guy as a country we just live through a hundred billion dollar lockdown pharmaceutical charade shutdown mandate operation warp speed you know what i'm saying you can't access a society like big pharma and the government was in on one of the most diabolical schemes that i've literally ever witnessed in my lifetime and he pops up out of nowhere as a pharmaceutical ceo who used to play both sides fly to china hawk these shitty drugs on uh, jim kramer's show largest ipo in biotech history that like was over a hundred dollars and then crashed into 70 cents, which means that he's gifted and selling people a shit product that isn't going to work and, and convincing them that it might work. So it's like, I had every right to give him that interview. That's like, so, you know, the Republican media complex is just a money grab. So everybody else, they just want the views. I wanted to give a journalistic interview and I had like 10 to 20 minutes to, to ask eight questions. And he tried to stall me out on the first question. So I had to be a little blunt in order to get my job done because there's no way i was going to ask one question let them talk in circles for 15 minutes and then not get to do my interview and to me that interview might have been a setup because the media has never bothered me like that then i do an interview with him and all of a sudden all the media is smearing me a thousand times so you know that to me that interview just seemed like a setup anyway and that's a you have to understand that's a message to me that the media is sending if you ever get any big opportunities, we're going to call you anti-Semitic for the rest of your life. That's what they're telling me. If you ever get an opportunity, it doesn't matter what you talk about. doesn't matter what you do. This is your brand. This is who we say you are. We're going to call you that for the rest of your life. You want to talk about the speech laws? We're going to call you that. You want to tell the truth about the First Amendment? We're going to call you that. You want a fair and equal America? We're going to call you that. That's what they do. Candace Owens is talking about it very bravely right now because that's exactly what happens. And everyone knows it. It's just Ben Shapiro doesn't give a shit because he does it too. So it's like, that's the game that you play. If you know, if you believe in the First Amendment, if you like America, if you're not a total coward and a total sellout, they like to send the message, we're going to harass you forever and ever and ever. And we're going to try to make your life as miserable as possible if you ever speak the truth. So you might as well just fall in line. You might as well just stop because we'll never stop. But at a certain point, it's like, they've in my view they fumbled over the last couple months because like they're calling everyone that all the time and now there's a huge war in like 98 i'm gonna say 90 percent of the world but probably like 70 to 90 percent of the world probably doesn't agree with them so it's like you know you're using a word that no one believes anymore you used that word six years ago liberals look at you like you're crazy you've called every liberal that you've called every republican that you've called trump that you've called desantis that you've, you've called them all that so it's like no one takes it that seriously anymore because it's like they know that you're exaggerating and lying and using it as a control mechanism, which is what they, the, the media and uh, you know politicians do with everything. Racist, sexist, xenophobic, climate change, anti-vaxxer, denier, you know, the climate denier, whatever. Like they, they, These are all ways to tell you not to say what you're saying. It's like you want women to have traditional values, then you're sexist. You notice crime statistics or want to have the same activism that other racial groups do you're a racist you know you want a border xenophobe they do the same thing so it's like people are catching on to that stuff because you know everything i do this is why i would crush ben shapiro in a debate everything i do i can articulate what i mean i'm not using words that just say you're bad and i'm good because that's not a thing it's just like what do i mean i'm very clear about what i'm talking about i'm very honest i'm very accurate these other people they just say hate speech hate speech and they use a word and they say you're bad but they never have to explain why you're wrong because most of the time you're not wrong they can't say that they're wrong so they just say you're bad and that your true words are going to lead to something else they you know every group does it left wing right wing they all have something that, that they do that for so it's like i'm not losing a debate on these topics because i've studied them for eight years i'm honest i know what i'm talking about i'm not losing these people can't touch me so they just blacklist me and smear me it's fine it's whatever you know i wouldn't i don't want to be them anyway i don't care how much money they're making it's like that's not fulfilling in this life like i don't 
I don't want to be a coward. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to sit on Twitter and see everybody hating me because they know I'm phony. That's what happens. Everyone knows Christy Gnome's a phony. Everyone knows Ben Shapiro's a phony. Everybody's getting ratioed all the time, every second. Like everyone knows. Like, and their their job is just to make money and gatekeep. It's got to be miserable. I don't envy it at all. It's like that's that's a terrible life to live, you know. I would never want to be a politician or Joe Biden. Could you imagine? It's not like I want that. I, I'm just like, you know, that's what they're doing. Someone said Vivek asked, what was your name? When? You're saying in the interview? Listen, I challenge him to tennis. I want to play Vivek in tennis. I don't want to talk about politics anymore. Let's play one-on-one -on -one in tennis. Christy Noem is still the hottest chick in South Dakota, though. Okay. She's hot. Yeah, definitely. During the interview? You know, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not upset at anything that happened during the interview. Anomaly, your videos are going to age like fine wine. I appreciate it. They already do. Every video I made during COVID ages amazingly. I made a clip of all the things Ben Shapiro said. He said, oh my gosh, black people, you need to get the vaccine. Louis Farrakhan so hateful. Oh my gosh, he wants black people to not get vaccinated. It's like, oh my gosh, he's anti-Semitic because he doesn't want the vaccine. It's like, dude, all of his takes aged like shit. You could, like, if you watch all of Ben Shapiro's videos from 2020 to 2021, like 80% of them age like shit shit ages better because you can compost shit and it turns into fertilizer it ages like spoiled milk gmo milk and uh you know it's like every video i made during the pandemic find a single one for a single minute that aged horribly it's it's gonna be hard pressed to find because i was telling the truth the whole time and being objective and, and accurate and using like i wasn't right and ben wasn't wrong because he's so smart and made a mistake i do real news analysis i'm accurate i'm fair i'm reasonable and he's lying it is what it is. You know, I have 20 minute compilations that I'm proud of that age amazingly. All of them did. Uh, would I ever talk to John Burks again? Yeah, I don't see why not. I'd be, and I'd love to see you on the PBD podcast. You got to let them know because they're they're trying to pretend like I don't exist and not talk to me. So they tried to hire me. You know, they wanted to do a deal. It didn't work out. No hard feelings. Wasn't upset about it at all. But I am a little bit annoyed because apparently they wanted to hire me with their company and have me work with them. But the second the deal doesn't go right, they act like I don't exist and they, they can't even respond to a text to have me on the podcast. So I guess they're only interested in having my opinion if they can own half of it. But if they can't, then all of a sudden, I guess I'm not the best journalist during COVID like they told me I was. Uh, you know, they're not really interested in that. They're probably just interested in hanging out with Trump and, you know, making money and having on p other people. So, you know, I, I can't invite myself on a podcast that people are ignoring me. Yeah, they don't, you know, so you could let them know because they're not answering me. Appreciate you answering my question. Think I'll ever get on Joe Rogan's show. Joe Rogan follows me on Instagram. I've spoken to him in person. Balls in his court. I'm not mad if he never has me on. He has no, he has no, re like Joe, Joe doesn't owe me anything. No one owes me anything, but it's like, if Joe wants to have me on the podcast, that would be awesome. If not, you know, that's his choice. I'm not even mad at Joe Rogan. PBD, he also owes me nothing, but it's like we talked for months and he tried to sign me to his podcast. And now because it didn't work out, we had no hard feelings. He won't let me on the podcast. I mean, he won't even answer my text. He acts like I don't exist. So it's like, you know, that I feel a little, if Joe Rogan tried to hire me for four months and then wouldn't even chat with me, then I'd be a little annoyed at it. But Joe, like Joe owes me nothing. Neither does anyone, but it's like, and also I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't like the way PBD's team talked to me the whole time. They talked to me like I was a piece of shit and they tried to like strong arm me and make me not confident in order to like fit into the box. And it was never working with me. I'm successful. I have millions of followers. I have billions of views. I like my life. I'm not broke. I built all this for myself. You know, I know a lot of athletes and entertainers. I hang out with Joe Rogan. Like I know a lot of people too. And it's like, they were talking to me the whole, whole time, like trying to like shit on me in order to like gain leverage. And it was, it was all like, just kind of like, that's kind of, why it didn't work out in my opinion is because they're like you don't want to be desperate and talk to me all weird and it's like you don't want to do this and it's like bro just give me a good deal i'm not like uh, you don't got to play like psychological games with me it's not going to work i'm not like I i'm very confident and very successful so that's not the way to do business with me 
But with that being said, after it all happened, I don't take business personally. So we were cool. I said, you know, maybe it'll work in the future. Maybe it won't. I'm not tripping either way, but it, you know, we, we were on good terms. And then, you know, I texted twice. I waited a couple of weeks, but I was like, Hey, I'd love to just chat on the podcast. You know, it's okay that the deal didn't work, but I'd love to have a conversation ignored, said it again, ignored. So clearly they don't respect me or value what I do. They just wanted to own me which makes me feel a certain way. So, you know, they can go talk to Charlie Kirk and Tim Pool and liberals and all these other fake stupid people and just, you know, make money. That's fine. But, you know, they don't respect me enough to have me on the show. And I know more successful and more famous people than them that respect me. Some of the goats of certain sports, the greatest of all time, will, will respect me and answer and, and have conversations more than that. So, I mean, they totally just tried to steamroll and disrespect me. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's like, I, I definitely feel a certain way about it. I don't, I'm, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I don't care that the deal didn't work, but now I can't be, now I'm not on the podcast. Like what, what did they ever want to do anything or were they just trying to scam me the whole time? You know, I'm not really sure, but someone said, I asked John Burke if he wants to chat with you again. And he said he absolutely would. He says he agrees with your takes a lot more now. Well, with the John Burke thing, I mean, if, if we want to be honest and no disrespect to him because he seems like an authentic guy, he came on my show a couple years ago. And the whole reason he came on show is he was talking all this shit to me saying, oh, you don't like Trump enough, blah, 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 blah. And he was talking shit to me. He came on the show just like everybody who talks shit to me. He has nothing for me. I smoke him. And now he's like turned into me. You know what I'm saying? He's Mr. DeSantis, Trump's the vaccine salesman, whatever. Look at the last time he was on my show. He was literally like pissed off that I was saying all those things. Now he just copy and pasted my entire shtick and, and is acting like he, it's, it's his. And I don't care. It's not a thing that I'm trying to gatekeep, but it's like, of course he agrees with me more now because last time he was on the show, you know, he was all pissed at me. And the whole reason he came on the show last time is he was talking all this shit to me. Oh, you're a fake, blah, blah, blah. And then I have him on the show is nothing for me. And now he literally like is like a, you know, like just turned into me basically. So of course he agrees with me now. He, he figured it all out, but I don't care, but it's like, you know, he can apologize for talking shit last time and then turning into me. That's if he can apologize then he can come on the show, but I didn't mind talking to him last time. But the whole reason he got that interview is he was so mad at who he is now, you know? So it's whatever. Do I know who Spike Cohen is? He's been on the show. Super nice guy. I like Spike Cohen. Uh, libertarian, good guy. I like, I like Spike. Nothing bad to say about that guy. He could come on the show again too. I, I would like to hear his takes him, Dave Smith. You know, th these are good libertarians. He had, <laughs> someone said he had spike protein on. No, I did not have spike protein on. That's hilarious. Um, you should, guys should clear up the air. I'm not fighting with anybody. There is no infighting. I'm just saying like, I just want him to admit that he now realizes that I was completely right and he shouldn't have come at me all weird like that. I've, I'm not fighting with him at all. I like John Burke's tweets. I think he's definitely in a better place now and he's being more honest. But, you know, I think as a man, like you should admit, be like Anomaly was right before I was wrong. I came at him weird. I'm sorry. You know, that like, he can do that. But if he doesn't, I don't care. I still like John. I like his tweets. I've, I think I've retweeted him re in some cases. And I think, uh, you know, I think he's trying to be uh, honest. And I, I appreciate that. I like I like John Burke's tweets more than most people. So, you know, uh, there's no there's no infighting. I'm just I'm just being very honest. Uh Anomaly, have you ever talked to the other Anomaly channel? No, I did. I would assume he probably is like annoyed by me or something because we have the same name. I don't know. Sounds like you're crying like a girl. It sounds like I'm not doing that. I'm not crying. I'm not. I don't care. I'm just being honest. I just think it's funny when someone's really like annoyed at me and talking shit to me and then comes on and argues with me. And then three years later, they're saying the exact same things I was saying three years ago. That's all I'm saying. I'm not mad at it. I don't, I'm not crying. I just think it's funny. So like I want, I want to hear that from that. If they want to talk, like I'm not mad at them at all. I just think it's funny. Like that's what happened, you know? So it is what it is. It's, it's like nothing. I'm, I'm not even remotely mad at John. I, I, I enjoy his takes from what I've seen. 
and I'm glad that he's there. Like it's not, there's no anger, upset. Like I'm just, I'm just documenting what happened. Like that's literally what I just said is what happened. That's, I'm not mad. I think it's funny, honestly. Um, you better be able to get those hoodies again. I'm not. So if you want one, dreamrare.com. I know they're good. I know people like them. They still, I still have God is great hoodies. If you want one, the time is now to get one. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to get them again. Thanks for engaging with the critics and bringing the truth out your best quality. I don't even consider everybody critics. Though. I mean, some people are critical, but like, it's, it's just part of the discussion. So unless someone says something crazy, it's like, it's not a big deal. I appreciate it. Someone said apologies are a sign of weakness. It's over next. I don't even necessarily want an apology. I just want like, it's like sometimes like, I, here's what I'm saying. Cause I don't, I don't know what he thinks. So I don't even care, but let like, okay, I'm going to document it again. And then I'm going to tell you why I'm not necessarily like begging for an apology. He was like getting really rude and annoying to me and talking shit to me and was like, I want to debate you because you're on calling vaccine or you're, you're, you're a fake or whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I had this guy on my show. Of course he comes on the show. He's in a league way above him. That doesn't even know what to say. Barely like debates me because he's not in my league. And then like semi agrees with me on the show. I don't even remember. Long ago. Three years later, he realizes everything I was saying that is true. And then he literally just becomes a different version of me of what I was three years ago. And then like, that's his whole thing now. I'm not asking for an apology. It's just like, I'm just curious. Like, does he even know that's what happened? Or, or is he like under some sort of like delusion that like that never happened i'm not i don't even care if you apologize i'm just like wondering like how he sees it like does he realize that i don't know if i was talking shit to somebody and i was wrong and i got upstaged in a debate and then i wanted to talk to him three years later i would go on there and be like yo i was wrong my bad you know i, I shouldn't have came at you that way because you were totally right and i just didn't realize it at the time i would have no problem saying that i don't think it's weakness it's just honesty an honest man like if i i'll be honest i David Icke used to talk shit about Trump and I didn't agree with him. I thought he was wrong. Um, but I really, I'm not saying he's right about everything, but he was right about that. I have no problem saying David Icke was challenging Trump before I wanted to challenge Trump. And I, I didn't understand what he was saying, but now I understand. Um, there's nothing weak about that. It's just the truth. So I'm just curious if he, if he realizes that he was wrong then and like that he figured it all out or if he's so like delusional that he thinks he just like thought of it and like that never happened. So I don't need an apology. I'm just, I like, I don't know. Sometimes like people will do that and then not even realize they did it and they'll be like, what? I never said that or did that. And it's like, then it's just weird, you know? If one person could be president, who would it be? Thomas Massey, a thousand percent. Could I try to get Andy Frisella on the show? Absolutely. Yet out of anybody in politics, Thomas Massey, he's the realist. He's the best. In a, in a functional America, he would be the president. He knows how to. He knows how to handle it. He knows what he's doing. I, for sure, him. Anomaly MCAT would be insane. I would love to talk to Tim, but I'm not going to the beanie bunker. They got to set up somewhere that I trust. I don't trust them. So, you know, if I could talk to Tim in a setting that I trust, then I'll go there, but I'm not going to the smelly, you know, diglet bunker. I could get Andy Frisella on the show. We're good friends. So I, we're just both busy, but yeah, I, I, thank you for reminding me. I'll get Andy on the show. Out of everybody in this industry, Andy's one of the realest ones. We're good friends. He'll hit me up sometimes. Like I could easily get him on the show. No, no problem. I like Andy a lot. Why won't you collaborate with Make Music Right Again, Anomaly? I don't even know who's Make Music Right Again. I don't even know who that is. Why? Uh, why are you suggesting I wouldn't make music with them? I don't. Who? Who is that? If I've made music with them before, why would? Why do you think I wouldn't again? I don't know. Confused. Bro, who are you talking about? Who's who's make music right again? You're like spamming shit stuff, and I you're like making up a controversy that doesn't exist. If I had to choose between David Ike or Alex Jones, it's not even a question. David Ike, uh, Alex, he's been getting very phony recently. I'm not mad at Alex. I don't think he's a bad guy, but David Ike, 
I, I much prefer. I don't agree with either of them 100%, but um, yeah, I think I think David is David is more I think he's more uh honest. Did I see Bobby Sauce supporting the Wendy's price surging? No. But I don't know I don't even know his reasoning for it, but uh you know, Wendy's is not like the best thing to eat anyway. I'm not saying it should be that expensive, but to be honest, like, I don't know. I wish they were better. I'm not really concerned with the Wendy's prices personally. I'm sure a lot of people eat it all the time, but they probably shouldn't, you know? Uh, there's probably a better way to do life than eating it all the time. <laughs> How do I feel about facial recognitions about at airports? I'm not thrilled about it. I don't, I don't think it's a good step, but the thing is they have all our stuff. I'm not saying it's good to do all this, but like, it's like when someone says, Oh, they're going to, they're going to put a watch to spy on you. Or like, it's like, guys, they get, they got phones and computers and every TV is a smart TV and like cameras. Like they have everything. They have everyone's data. Everyone, like everyone's already got in that way. I'm not, a, I'm not for facial recognition technology at airports, but like they already, they don't need facial recognition to have all our shit, but it's not, it's not like good. Cause now they're just going to scan your face and then they could do stuff with it. So yeah, I would rather not use that personally, but someone said he goes too hard with conservatives a lot of times. Well, I'm I'm me. Like I'm responsible for what I do, the content I make. If I were someone else, I'd make their content. The reason I don't is because I'm not them. So I'm not gonna sit and like defend someone else's like uh energy or you know like the whole reason i made content was because i wasn't feeling the competition i thought that there was a lot left to be desired and to be honest when i started there wasn't that many people in it now there's more you know there's i like the competition i think it's good to have more people like i you know i just wish people were, were doing a good job or trying to do a good job because like the more people the better i don't think like gatekeepers are not necessarily like good when certain people kind of can control everything like there needs to be a lot of creators where like great content and great narratives get through but people will be like he did this and this person did this like dude i don't i'm i'm, I'm me what would i do if i got invited to a diddy party 10 years ago or now because like if i i never went to a diddy party but if i would have got invited to a diddy party when i was younger i would have thought it was a good thing because like diddy's a famous guy in music so it would be like an opportunity now if i got invited to a diddy party dude i'm not i would be sketched out i would not go i, don't, I wouldn't go to a lot of famous parties now because like i'm not really like that's not my click so i would be like you know I go to events I want to go to. I don't I don't think I would go to like a party like that. There's a lot of parties that would sketch me out. Depends who was throwing it, but yeah, I, I it's an, it's a no-go. When am I going to have a baby? When I'm married with a woman that I know I'm going to be with for the rest of my life? I'm not trying to have a baby at a wedlock. Someone said you would be sodomized at a day party. <laughs> I would not allow that to happen, but like, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to speak on these parties that I've never been to, but there, there's a lot of people like diving into that court case and it seems pretty, pretty weird. Who are my top three rappers of all time? I, it's, it's tough for me to say, to be honest. Did he made Usher hit them high notes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all are y'all are too much. Hey, come on. P. Diddy or Dennis Rodman? I've met Dennis Rodman, so I've I've hung out with Dennis Rodman. I'm not gonna go as far to say I've gone to like parties with Dennis Rodman, but I've I've talked to Dennis Rodman. I interviewed Dennis Rodman. Um I've yeah, I've never met Diddy. Rodman was nice. We only we talked for like five minutes, but it wasn't like he was inviting me to some freaking party or anything. I mean, Rodman's kind of a cool guy, but he he's definitely an interesting character. But like, he's a you know, he's always been that way. It's not like he just started doing it. He's always been very bizarre. That's what makes him Dennis Rodman, though. If he was normal, I don't think anyone would care. Who's my favorite famous person that you've met? I 
I mean, I would say, I don't know if people, there's a lot of cool people that I met, but I would say I probably had the most fun out of like any celebrity that I met. Um, I mean, I like Jake Shields a lot. Jake, Jake was really cool. And we were hanging out with like Gordon Ryan. They were cool. But like uh, Chip the Rip, I don't know if you guys know King Chip or Chip the Ripper. He's a rapper. He used to do songs with Kid Cudi. I was a big fan of him growing up. And uh, dude, we had a great time. Like he's super down to earth, super cool. Someone said Roseanne. Roseanne is also up there. She's definitely like really cool, really down to earth, really, really funny. Um, but yeah, probably Chip. Chip. Cat Turd. I've never met Cat Turd. I don't know. I've, I mean, I've, I've met a lot of cool people. I don't want to like single people out and make other people feel bad, but off the top, I'd say Roseanne, Jake Shields and, uh, Chip the Rip are all top, top tier. Oh, Jim Brewer is super nice too. Dude, Jim Brewer's the man. Like he's, he's definitely like good guy. You didn't come out wearing a dress after a Diddy party. I did not know. I never got successful enough in the rap world, like in the industry to, to get to that point. I didn't get to, you know, I, I'll say this though, and I'm not like blowing a whistle or, or anything. It's not like that serious. But when I had record, like record meetings with like labels and, and like uh, management groups and like this one, I think it was called like orchard music distributor. Like I met the CEO on the street or something. They, they had they were like I'm, they weren't like grooming me they weren't doing anything bad but like they were like all kind of like interested like oh this kid's got talent he's got a big following on on youtube like one thing that they told me one time i'm not kidding they said you should we like we're gonna like dress you up in abercrombie like it's it like they weren't like we're gonna do gay things or anything but they were just like you should wear abercrombie and i was like no i don't want to like uh, I used to wear that, but I'm like 19 or 20. Like I don't wear Abercrombie anymore. It's kind of corny at this point, but like I wear like band shirts and stuff, but they were like, they were trying to tell me like that I should wear Abercrombie. It's not a dress, but it, it is kind of weird telling people like, let's dress you up like this. Like, I think they saw me as like a white kid and we're like, let's dress you up super white. So all the white kids like you. And I was like, no. And Every time I say no, all my deals end. I'm not like, I'm not so crazy where I'm like, no, screw you. I'm very reasonable. I just say no at certain things. And when I say no, like the deal always ends. Like I was like, I don't want to wear Abercrombie. Dude, I'm down to look fresh. Like I didn't have the best sense of style at the time. Um, but it's like Abercrombie, like, can't we wear cooler clothes than that? Like, you know, Abercrombie was, it was already at the point where like it wasn't that cool anymore. Like if you had a white rapper come out wearing Abercrombie, like head to toe, you'd look like a freaking idiot. You know, you look like a boy banders. Like no one would have respected me in the rap world. Um, I didn't want to dress like that. It wasn't my natural style. So, you know, and same with like the la like it's always like, do you like, here's what you're going to do. And I'll be like, no, let's like, and I'll just tweak it a little bit. Like I'm not like, oh, screw you guys. I'm just like, let's not let me not wear that but let's do it this way and they're like no 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 no, we're not interested so with like other deals even in the news world they're like let's do it like this and i'm like let's tweak it a little bit and it's like no 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 we're not interested so i feel like that's how you get to certain places is like you just do what they say and it's like a test where it's like if you'll wear abercrombie then you'll do this then you'll do that you know four years later like they want someone that's moldable especially in the koreas like they'll like dye your eyelids they'll like bleach your face like they literally want like a meat suit like a guy they're like oh is he good at dancing and really stupid let's get this guy like does he have no backbone whatsoever how bad does he want to be famous because dude the koreans they like abuse the shit out of these people it's like they're dying their skin color dying their eyelids they're dressing them up like justin bieber looking like white boys and stuff but it's like you have to do that to get there so it's like they don't imagine if you're like a really talented singer and dancer and they're like hey i don't want to dye my face white I'm not, I'm not that white and they're like okay well this guy's not going to work out that's how i've always felt in every meeting because it's like even at this point, like I've done a lot where I have a lot of leverage, you know, not the most, but I have a lot of leverage, but they, they don't want people with leverage because when you have leverage, that means you're going to say no. They want people that won't say no, that don't have leverage or don't care enough to use their leverage. And uh, yeah, like I've from, from the time I was 19 till now, it, politics, music industry, everyone kind of has the same vibe. They try to like bully you. They, they try to bully you 
and then treat you like shit and hope that you believe them in order to get you in a good deal. Even when I had nothing, I still was confident where they're like, you have, you're have, you not shit. And I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm going to be a star. Like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm the man. Oh, no, you're not shit. And like, that's when I had nothing. And I still, I still had a chip on my shoulder. I was like, don't talk to me that way. I don't care if I have five views and zero dollars in the bank account. Like, if you're interested in me enough to even consider signing me, then I would think you respect my skill and talent enough. I'm not acting like I'm rich or famous, but like if I'm talented, like I, I believe in myself, they don't want you to believe in yourself. It's like they try to beat you down like a hammer. So then you have no leverage that they could sign a deal. And that's what happened last year too. It's like, I don't mind complimenting others. Like I under, I'm, I'm very self-aware. Like you have better production. You have a better YouTube channel. You have better, you know, business acumen. Like I'm not saying I'm the best at everything. I'm like, I'm good at what I do. But, I, but, but when I talk to other people in business, I'm like, listen, let's be honest. You're better at this, 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 and this. You're doing this. You have more money. You have cameras. You have lights. You have all this stuff. You have like the ability to build in this stage. And here's what I have. I have my Facebook page. I have my YouTube. Here's, here's the skills that I have. But when I talk in a meeting like that, I'm loving and I'm complimenting the other side saying, you're great at all this stuff. I'm not putting them down to try to make myself look better. That's such a scummy thing to do. I'm like, no, you are great at that. That's why I'm here with you. But they're not treating me that way. They're trying to act like I'm not doing this. You don't have this. You don't have that. You don't have this. You're not doing that. You're like, they're trying to beat me down. So I believe them and make me feel small so they can sign me to a smaller deal. And the second that I say, no, they're not interested anymore. This has happened for 20 years in my life where it's like, I'm not 19 years old anymore. I'm not a kid who could rap with nothing. I have a billion views. I have millions of followers. My Facebook page is bigger than a lot of like most Facebook pages in the world. I have 1.6 million followers. Like my Instagram is extremely engaged. Like I, I, I know my worth. I'm not saying I'm the biggest person in the world, but I'm definitely in the top tier. Uh, and, and these people don't acknowledge that. They don't say you're great. We're great. We do this better. You do this good. Let's work together. They're just like, you ain't shit. They don't say it literally, but it's like, you ain't shit. You, you, you're nothing. Why don't you come do this with us? Cause that's like the leverage that they're trying to use. And it's like, dude, it's way too late to be treating me that way. But like that must, you know, I, I, I think I get it though. It's, it's, it's fucked up, but it's like, they, it's like, if I were to let that happen, then I'm weak. If I'm weak, they can manipulate me. If they can manipulate me, then I'm a good employee, you know? And it's like, they treat me that way because it's like, let's see if he'll cave. If he doesn't cave, fuck him. Let's just use him. Let's throw him aside, act like he doesn't exist. And then we'll sign the Kmart version of him that sucks, that will suck, you know, whatever we tell him to or do whatever we tell him to. It's like, that's what's going on. And I'm not just saying that out of a place of hate or anything because I don't have hate. I don't need anything. But like, I'm tired of being treated that way. It's been 20 years of that since I was 19. And- I have a little chip on my shoulder too, because like, you know, people see certain stuff and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were talented. I did. I've been good at rap since I was 19. I had label meetings. I had big distributors meeting with me. I've always, I, I could have been, I'm not, I don't care. Cause it's like my, my life has worked out and I've still made it. But like, I could have done a lot of stuff. If I would have worked with people that didn't hate me, I could have done this since I was 21, 22 done. All, but I'm always working against the grain. Everyone's treating me like shit. So that's why I have a trip chip on my shoulder because I've always had to do it my own way, build it, build it. And no matter how big you get or how much you, you real estate, they still just want to treat you that way. You know, and it's like, I'm, I'm so beyond tired of it now. So it's like, I'm not dealing with it and I'm not going to let people disrespect me. Like I don't take it personally in business, but at the same time, it, you know, there's no, like, I don't walk into business meetings talking to people like they're pieces of shit. Like, you know, just like, I'm like, you're great. I'm, doing good. Like, let's do this. It's not like, fuck you guys. You suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. I'm great. Uh, hey, let's do a business deal now. Like who wants to do that? You know, who would do that? Somebody with nothing, someone desperate for fame, someone desperate for money and attention. And that's why it works. It's like, throw it out there. See if he bites. If he doesn't, we'll find someone who does. But what type of man would put up with that? One that would never say no. <laughs> you know, I think that's what's going on. Yeah. They need puppets. But it's like, you know, I feel a certain way too because on one hand, it's like I don't want, like I'm not desiring what they desire. But on another hand, I'm not a pushover. So it's like I'm not going to let these people just shove me aside, try to blacklist me, and then hire some doofus that's one one-tenth of as good as me and act like he's so amazing. So it's like I'm always conflicted where it's like I'm not really trying to say anything. I don't, I don't like personal drama and I don't have any like, you know, I'm in my own zone. But the, at the same time, I know what they're doing. It's like they, they're trying to just run over me and then give someone else my spot and then act like I don't exist. And it's like, 
it, it's not going to happen. Like I'm not, you, 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 you don't have the power to do that. You're not going to do that. I'm not going to allow it to do that. And there's levels to this shit. It's like, you're not going to, you know, that person's not as good. It, like everyone knows it. Like you could put a million dollars of advertising into him and he still won't have the following I have. He won't have the engagement. He'll have some, but it's like, it's artificial. So you know, part of me wants to just ignore everybody. Part of me wants to kind of compete because I'm like, I'm not going to let you guys run over me and take take all my stuff and then act like I'm not, I, I don't exist. Like that's not, it's not even an option. So, you know, it is what it is. Someone said only beta males fall in line. Uh, yeah, pretty much. All right, I'm going to take off folks. God bless you. Wait. Yankee hip hop culture doesn't have to define you anomaly. You can start a record label or do plays. I'm yeah, I'm all right. I'm not I'm not worried about it. Someone said I'm the Kemba Walker of political media. I don't know what that means, but that can't be a good thing because I don't I don't think he's in the league anymore. What happened to Kemba Walker? Real quick before I leave, did he like did he do something stupid or did he just not want to sign a deal and then they kicked him out or something? I don't I don't know. He was good though, but now he's gone. So that's. that's a, why I think you and John should speak together. I'm not against it. I'm just, what I'm trying to say is like, I just think it's funny. Like I'm not, I, I, I like the guy. I, I'm sure he, like we have mutual friends. I'm sure he's cool. I just want, he doesn't have to apologize. I don't care. I want him to acknowledge if we talk, I just want him to acknowledge that he was talking shit to me for shit. I was right about that. He was wrong about that. He's now right about. So it's like, what's the point of me? getting ship talked by some guy who's dumber than me. That's like getting all pissed. Cause I'm right. And he's wrong. He comes on my, my show, right. Gets absolutely the floor wiped with him. Cause he has no idea what he's talking about. Three years later. Now he sounds exactly like me about these topics. He's three years late. Is he going to admit that or no? And then also you're saying he has a different opinion about me about foreign policy. Well, he's probably wrong about that too. And he'll probably be right about that in three years. So it's like, why do I want to have a loop with like, you know, like I just want there to be like a good faith conversation and like him to admit that he was wrong. It's not an apology. It's just the truth. Like if that can't happen, I'm not interested in talking to someone that's four years behind me. That's that, that doesn't get it. Cause there's no, there's nothing there for me. You know, like what's the, what's the point? I already did that. I already heard him complain to me. I already had him on the show. I already mopped the floor with him. And now he sounds like I did three years ago. Like, you know, if, if he can admit that, then we could talk about other topics. We disagree with that. If he can't, then I could care less that he disagrees with it. Cause he's wrong about that. Just like, he, you know, he was wrong three years ago. I, don't, I just don't get the point. <laughs> it's not like I'm mad, but I'm having someone on the show on Friday, money Moicano. I told people his name is Renato Moicano. I'm excited for him. He's wild. He's a UFC fighter. He's hilarious. He gets a little political and he seems like very like pro America, uh, as a Brazilian. So I'm, I'm pumped. Like, you know, I kind of just do stuff I want to do now. I like, I would like to do that. Would I debate David Pakman? I would consider it. But the thing is like, you know, they say that eyes are the window to the soul and David Pakman has really evil eyes. Like if you look in that guy's eyes, you just see like a demon snake. So like, you know, could I debate David Pakman? Absolutely. Would we probably agree on some things? Absolutely. Is he more liberal than I am? Absolutely. Do I want to talk to David Pakman? Not really. No, I'd, I'd much rather talk to Jimmy Dore. I like Jimmy Dore, but you know, I, like, can, can I talk to, can I talk to Jimmy Dore instead? I just, I just don't, I just don't feel like talking to people that I don't think are good people. And I'm not saying he's horrible or whatever, but like, you know, just looking into that guy's eyes, they're like, it just like, if that guy was my cashier, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like what's, what did this guy do? You know? Yeah, I like Jimmy Dore. I, I I think he like me and him would have a better conversation. Uh, you know, it's just like the other guy, not really much for me there. But yeah, appreciate you. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. Real quick, someone said, you know, you better have more sweatshirts. I'm not going to have more sweatshirts after this point. I'm kind of going to switch lanes and try to do different stuff. So if you do want a sweatshirt, they are good. Um, and they're there. So like now's the time to get hats, sweatshirts, beanies, like anything you guys want the next couple of months, it's going to sell out. And then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going completely sell, not selling out, but selling out my shop. Then I want to do a whole new product line, a whole new style, whole, different products. Like I'm really trying to dream big and do something bigger than just what I've been doing. 
it's going to take a lot of time and effort and all these things that I hate doing because I'd rather just sit and do nothing. But like everyone else, I got to work. And as somebody who does this, I do want to end and say I'm grateful for what I do because as much as I complain, it's not that bad. I've done harder labor jobs and uh, everything comes at a cost. And you know, if I do this till I'm 65, I'd rather not. But uh, it could be worse. Uh, if you do hard labor till you're 65, you can't tell somebody doing hard labor that they should work until they're 80. Because it's not like there's there's a real difference to being like you know really working for 40 hours and like doing political news stuff. Like I consider myself very fortunate, and I would never tell people like Ben did that they should just keep working. It's like can we have some context of like what their job is and if they can do it or how instead of just being like keep going because even for me, it, I don't want to do this forever, you know? And it, it's not like it's horrible. It's just like, I don't, I don't know. Politics is a weird industry. It's just like, I, I'd, I'd rather do like sports or something. I, you know, I don't know if that's smart, but we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll talk about the Andrew Tate stuff tomorrow. I, I was going to talk about it, but it doesn't really fit in here. Appreciate you. God bless you. Anybody asking to add hats? Everything in the shop, if you want it, buy it. If not, I'm not taking requests right now. Like just, just look at the stuff in the shop and my whole next line of stuff, I already have it planned out. So I'm not, I'm not gonna do I might not have even do baseball hats to be honest. I mean, maybe, but if you want it, just get it now. I uh, appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll be back soon. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Just a few ways to stay in touch and support if you'd like to. The first way is dreamrare.com. We have blue beanies, black beanies, pink hats, other colored hats, freedom versus tyranny shirts, stay blessed long sleeve, God is great long sleeve, and lots of more cool items coming soon. Dreamrare.com. Check out the shop to support. Everything's made in the United States. Handpicked by me. Patreon.com slash rare talk for $5 a month. You can help support me. Support the show. If you haven't noticed, unlike other channels, I don't work with very many sponsors, sometimes none at all. And part of the way I'm able to do that is with the dreamrare.com shop and patreon.com slash rare talk. So thank you guys for keeping this show free, unimpeded, uninterrupted. I'm forever grateful. My free email list is stayintouchwithme.com. So check the links below in the description or just type in on any browser, stayintouchwithme.com, all one word. You'll find my email list, put it in there, and it's the least annoying email list you'll ever be on. I barely use it because I don't like getting emailed every day or every week. It's annoying. So I don't do it. Stayintouchwithme.com. It helps me take back some power away from big tech. Telegram t.me slash dreamrarechat or at dreamrarechat. Due to censorship, I post all my live stream and videos there. Sometimes I have some bonus content and I try to give people a heads up when Facebook or YouTube won't. Dreamrarechat at Telegram. My Instagram is at dreamrare. Thanks for everybody following there for shorter content. And dreamrarelinks.com. That's dreamrarelinks.com. Has all my stuff. My podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, my music on Spotify and Apple, my Rumble page, my BitChute and Gab page. All my links are found at dreamrarelinks.com. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless you. You already know I'll be back with more content soon. Appreciate you.